complaining and oh, rightly so. Good. Big Good. drainage Good. problem. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to the December 23rd meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get into public comment, um, I've had a request, email request, which I copied the rest of the board members on from uh, Cliff Sennett, the Executive Director of the um, Rockingham Planning Commission to speak a little to our um, agenda item rela related to our membership in that. If the, um, I think that would be productive. If the Board has no objection, I would like to slide that agenda item under old business forward to immediately follow um, Mike Swartz's appointment and give uh, Cliff a, a few minutes to speak to that subject. Would that be okay with the board? Yeah, okay. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. First item on the agenda is public comment. Would somebody from the public wish to comment? Arthur? <coughs> the uh, thing, uh, Art Moody, 3 Thompson Road. The thing about uh, seawall along Norris Lane, six lots that we sold at 30 percent <laughs> fair market value, the land that is, <coughs> they're beachfront lots. Uh, I'm concerned that it hasn't really been thought out. I heard that you're going to use RSA 4114A lease up to five years instead of town meeting approval for that. Uh, I don't really think that RSA was for land that is usually used by the public. We, we fought a fish house case for years and years and got the state Supreme Court uh, to tell us we had the rights in that area. The town had the rights. And uh, from what I understand from last week, the value of that land is going to be added to the lot, individual lot, for tax purposes, because that's the law. You've got to tax it if it's used public land for private purposes. Well, I imagine the lease is going to have a rent, too. And there's no discussion of the rent for the lease. Uh, and if they don't pay the lease rent, they have to move stuff off. So, so many days to move your property off the lease land. That's what the current town leases are anyway. Mm. It seems like a bag of worms there that is being opened up. And it's it, 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 Sun Valley had to uh, petition for their riprap seawall on the right. town beach on the river. You can't even get a machine in there to rake the beach now. They didn't have a lease. They haven't had their property value increased, as far as I know. Uh, I, I, and, and of course, town leases, uh, the other, the usual town leases are 20 years. I would think those people would renege at something five years, but uh, that's for the future. And speaking about Sun Valley, I uh, haven't heard anything in the last couple of meetings about the so-called proposed by the town of Hampton to the town of Seabrook. Joint operations plan is what it is. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find that in the statutes. And you only have the authority as granted by the statutes. That's a lot of case law on that. There is a statute 53A on agreements between municipality, uh, municipal organizations it does have a relatively new DPW, Public Works. But there are things you have to follow in that 53B, 53A, and uh, including a termination date of the agreement. And, and if it involves somehow the jurisdiction of a state agency, you have to get their permission. And DES may have jurisdictions about raking raking the title area. 
So is it, there is a new selectman over there of the three selectmen who was a long time resident of Hampton and a Hampton police officer part time for a long time. But as they kept telling us in the 90s, when they were putting in sewer all over their town, that they couldn't do Sun Valley, 100 lots we have on the other side of the river, unless Sun Valley was part of Seabrook again. And that feeling may still exist over there. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else from the public? Sir? Good evening. Mr. Chairman. Could, could you uh, state your name and address, sir? I'm sorry. Uh, your name and address? I'm, I'm going to get to that, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Sir. And I thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Good evening. Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the Hampton Board of Selectmen, Hampton Town Manager, Mr. Fred Welch, and the taxpayers and residents of Hampton. My name is Richard Ballou, and I reside at 9 Birch Road in Hampton, New Hampshire. I rise and stand before you to announce and place before you this evening the submission of a citizen's petition to be presented to the residents on the 2014 Hampton Town Warrant. The co-sponsor of this petition, Mr. Victor R. DeMarco, is unable to attend this evening as a result of an illness in the family and he extends his deepest regrets and he respectfully asks for your understanding. Petition. On the petition of Victor R. DeMarco and Richard A. Ballou and more than 25 other legal voters of the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate $25,000 as a donation to the Fisher House Foundation, Inc. The Fisher House program is a unique private-public partnership that supports America's military families. The foundation builds and donates comfort homes on the grounds of major military and VA medical centers. These homes enable family members to be close to loved ones at the most stressful time during hospitalizations for an unexpected illness, disease, or injury. The housing program has served more than 142,000 individuals since the program's inception in 1990 and nearly 3.6 million days of lodging. Estimated savings for the families has been $167 million in lodging fees, subsistence and transportation expenses. The American Institute of Philanthropy, now referred to as Charity Watch, rated the Fisher Foundation A plus with a 96% of every dollar received used directly to build the homes. It was on March 4, 1865 when President Abraham Lincoln delivered his second inaugural address. With its deep philosophical insights, critics have hailed the speech as one of Lincoln's best. He talked of the Civil War and the nation's recovery with the words, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan. Lincoln's immortal words became the Veterans Administration motto in 1959, and it is just as important now as it has been for over 148 years to never forget and always care for the courageous men and women who have answered the call. We believe that it is important as a community to remember those who have borne the battle and in their hour of need that we should do what we can to assist them with the medical care that is so urgently needed. We wish to thank everyone who signed the petition to ensure that it will go before the voters in 2014. We wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season and I thank you for allowing me to make this brief presentation. Okay. And I have the worn out petition here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so very okay, much. Okay, thank you. And before Mr. Blue so goes, we fire. want to thank you okay. for your yeah. service to this community in the Hampton Fire Department. We okay. haven't forgotten. It was an honor and a privilege. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else from the public? Seeing none. Announcements and community calendar. Mike? <laughs> 
<coughs> I don't have anything. Thank you. Bill? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, Merry Christmas to the Chairman and fellow board members and Mr. Welch. In uh, less than five hours, it's Christmas Eve. Uh, I would make a motion to adjourn, but I know I won't get a second. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so I will withdraw the motion I'm not making. And to uh, those uh, that are, are serving our town uh, this holiday season and are, are standing guard, standing watch, and are on duty, we thank you. Uh, we hope it's an easy day for you, uh, away from your family. We do appreciate it. Uh, this is the greatest town in the country. Uh, it's one of the finest municipal uh, delivery platforms you could ever lay eyes on and just a tremendous bunch of people and it's been a real privilege to uh, turn to and uh, serve with you. Thank you very much. Mike? All set. Mayor Louise? I have to commend Unitil. I was really not happy with Unitil in December of 2008 with the ice storm when we didn't have power for five days. But I will commend the fact that they are apparently being very proactive it was weather notices, et cetera. So I have to say thank you uh, because I, I may not be mad at them anymore. Okay. And, and the, the notices, too, from Public Works. Remember, this week and next week are holiday weeks. Right. Anyone with Wednesday waste pickup will go to Thursday. Regular Thursday waste pickup will go to Friday. And January 7th week, We'll start the new, and I don't know how many people have been notified of the new Public Works collection schedule, but they were putting flyers in some of the carts. So there will be a new collection schedule from January through March. Keep an eye out for that or check with Public Works if you're uncertain. Okay. Um, Slipman received a notice, uh, notice from Comcast some yes. price changes on uh, cable <laughs> TV, yeah. and I just like to pass that on a little bit of it anyway to the public. It was a fairly thick document, or whatever. Um, Comcast has added a dollar fifty um, charge to cover um, apparently the retransmitting of broadcast TV, which appears to apply to most um, customers. Um, the net impact of these price increases, and I just looked at a couple just that I thought were representative. But for example, the starter triple play goes from 141.99 to 147.49 and has the addition of the dollar 50 charge re, uh, resulting in a 5% increase mm -hmm. uh, limited basic cable which is is the minimal package um, and is currently at $24.60 will stay at $24.60 however with the addition of the dollar 50 charge it ends up being a 6% um, increase on the limited cable um, I just note that the CPI has been running about a one and a half percent over the last year or two. A um, hundred dollar cable bill um, would increase to a hundred and eight dollars um, over five years with an annual one and a half percent increase. Um, a one hundred dollar cable bill with a five percent increase over five years would increase to a hundred and twenty seven dollars. So the, the, the beauty of the compounding of numbers um, five or six percent increases over time versus what we're currently seeing an inflation of one and a half percent is is potentially um, huge so anyway Tell me if I may I, I'm glad we received this because I'm paying much more than what this thing says I should be paying I'll have to give them a call so thank you Good. I yes, will sir. call them yeah. because I got the I'm real cheap but I'm not as cheap and uh, as limited as some and I have the lim extended basic, I think it is, for 4535 My bill is not 4535 it's $75. So I've got to figure out what's going on there. Okay. First appointment, Mike Schwartzer, Finance Director. Four or five items. Mike, you plan on going in the order of the agenda? Uh, yes. Okay. And Mr. Dean, I would have second your vote. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We don't know if somebody else might have done that on this board, Mike. That's true. <laughs> Absolutely true. I have several agenda items, the first of which is the review of the November financial statements. Uh, they were distributed or generated on December 13th. I'm dealing with the month of November for the income and expense. It's the 11th month of the year, and the target is 91.7%. The total income for the month was 315000 Of that, motor vehicles was 164, which is... 49000 below budget and $53,000 behind November a year ago. 
However, on a year-to-date basis, it is still 7.2% above target and $109,000 ahead of 2012, which ended the year at 3% above budget. Other major contributors, interest on taxes, 10,000, building permits, 15, departments at 40, parking lots, <laughs> minus 24. I had made a uh, transposition error in a journal entry, and so I, am cor I corrected it this month. So my records and the parking lot records do tie out again. And franchise fees came in at 61, real estate trust at 41. I'm a little confused about the 41 for the real estate trust. I was looking back through here, and it, where did the 41K come from? If they send us a check every month uh -huh. from the interest distribution uh -huh. from the investments, uh -huh. and so we received a check for $41,000. Oh, okay. I, I didn't see that exact thing back there. It wouldn't be no, like that. No, you wouldn't. You're right. Because uh, if you go to the third page, the real estate trust income mm -hmm. so far this year is at $501,000 yeah, right. on a $600,000 budget. So it's, it's in there. It's growing. And Thank then you. we'll be getting the last um, in January, but we book it backwards into December. Thank you. That answers my question. Thank you. Uh, expense summary. At the end of November, the operating departments without debt service were at 88.5% of the budget which is 3.2% below the target of 91.7. Using this spread, annualizing it and modifying it, results in a year-end estimated savings of being underexpended, underexpended by $415,000. Comparative number in 2012 was $297, or $118,000 less. So, so basically, comparing to last year, we're running $118,000 and estimated ahead. You should note that the calculation contains approximately $197,000 of proposed year-end encumbrances from the big three. So I worked that into the numbers. I do expect this level of under-expenditure to be reduced during the next last month of the year, but to continue to stay above the 2012 figure of 137, which is where we ended up last year. Jumping to the middle of page two, in personal administration. The employee separation and buyback program accounts are under-expended by a net of $142,000. Board of Selectmen will need to determine if this amount will be sent to the trustee of the trust funds as they have done uh, as this year's addition to the compensated leave trust in keeping with prior years. I'll be bringing that up again later and also it probably will be discussed next week um, during the encumbrance meeting that mm -hmm. I'll be coming in. But just keeping in mind that we do we could put $142,000 and that is worked into the uh, forecast. Municipal insurance. Once the final health insurance payment is made, that account will be over by about $50,000. However, end of the year adjustment credit of $39,000 has been received by Workman's Comp, which when combined with the other under expenditures in the other insurance accounts, should result in the department being under by an estimated $51,000. So there's a $100,000 differential. You're going to be over fifty in medical insurance, but there's 100000 in other ones, so you'll end up being on the good side. PD continues to run 2.3% um, with all the regular wage accounts added below the month target. I don't expect any year-end year issues with PD. Fire department continues to run significantly below budget at 5.4, and as with PD, once again, I don't expect any end-of-the-year issues. On pages 10 through 12, Public Works and streets is within budget overall at 87.6, but it has specific accounts, building maintenance, vehicle maintenance, replacement equipment, and engineering that are all over the 100% level. The big unknown is snow and ice removal, where a major storm will generate large costs and overtime and fuel expense. And the sanitation di uh, division is also within the budget overall at 87.9, however the transfer station continues to be a problem. It's currently at 103.4. So this is through November, you're already at 103%. Uh, cable committee, franchise fee, the second half of 2012 and the first three quarters of 2013 were booked to date, which is greater than year-to-day expenditures by $23,000. From this, a check in the amount of 13.3 will be cut in December, actually has been, to reimburse SAU 90 for the purchase of equipment. That was the agreement that the board of selectmen made.
in Fund 27 EMS, and it doesn't really show on the report, but a purchase order has been issued for the replacement ambulance, <coughs> and it's approximately $177,500. That's the quick and dirty for the expense, expense and income section. I open up for questions. I got a question for you. I'll start it off. Um, the check we cut for the SAU 90, I understand that they have to agree to the terms. Is that correct? The, the check has been cut. It's in the hands of legal. Okay. Thank you very much, Mike, on that one. Uh, and then I had another question over here. That was answered by you earlier. I have a couple more, and then I'll be out of the way, Mr. Chairman, here in short order. Um, I'm, oh, I, something I wanted to complain about. I'll save that for later. Um, <laughs> nobody wants to hear that stuff. Um, oh, I was looking at on page 10 of 16 at the top. Uh, where it has highways and streets administration, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to figure out how we'd have staff overtime. Is that people, some of the staff? Is that do they are they union or are they salary? Uh, that's picking up more than just this. Not just the administration. That's the administration section, but it's the overtime being collected for multiple people within the within the group. Actually, that used to collect the overtime for the uh, plowing, oh, okay. which has been pulled out now and is in its own section. Okay, that answers that one. And then I had probably basically the uh, same question at the transfer station on 12 to 16. Mm. We're way over on that thing, but the overtime, you explain that one. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Phil? No, sir, I have no questions. Thank Hi. you, Director. Mayor Louise? Yeah, I, I noted um, on the revenue report, the first page, that the building inspection permits came to $213,163, which is not a bad total. That's uh, turning out to be a good source of revenue. Now, the rooms and meals tax on page two. We paid the last day possible the this year. Yeah, <laughs> I figured they're going to drag right. it back to the They squeeze that to the last. Is the 672000 a firm figure, Mike? Um, yeah, it's really close to that number. I got. The, I don't have the yeah. tax rate setting, but that's where it came in. As far as you know, okay. Um, and the parking lot revenues, and I know you have a minor correction there, but five hundred and twenty-six thousand six ninety-seven, roughly. That's certainly excellent um, revenue. Right. For the parking uh, lots. Um, it shows real estate trust income five hundred and one thousand two ninety-four. <laughs> Yes. So they're sending that to you monthly? Yes. Ah, okay. And then, bear with me really quickly here. Uh, I'm still seeing 2012 encumbrance, for example, in the town clerk, $5,818. I mean, can can they not buy I, the stuff? I believe, I believe that that was like the last fix-up of, the, of their office. Oh. Oh. Done. <coughs> it just hasn't cleared through yeah. here yet. Cause I, and then the same thing for the election administration, 6,000. That's the other yeah, half of it. She split it between the two. Drives me crazy. But Absolutely, I, I'm I, with you on that. All right, I will, I will go crazy quietly. Um, but it just seems to me that when you're like two years on into the process, yeah. it's actually I, I, yeah, spend the darn money and get it over with. Um, <coughs> and then, of course, you've got they still got 2012 encumbrances in the police yeah. budget. Oh. That's, that saddle. Saddle. That's a saddle. $98,000 yeah. for saddles. Uh, on 7 of 16, I'm sorry, it shows I'm sorry. police department, $98,000 for Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> what page do you want? Well, I got it right here. What page do you want? 16, right here. Page 7? 7 of 16. Total okay. police department, 4210, $98,000 okay. for Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I hold know. on. That excited. was... That column yes. shows what was encumbered. Yes. The column, what you've got left is six thousand dollars for twenty twelve. Those dollars have been spent. Okay, why don't we wipe them out of the column? Because mathematically Oh God love you. You have to have the encumbrance yeah. plus the budget <coughs> what you are comparing your expenditures against. You just can't make them disappear because that mm -hmm. literally is money that was able to be spent in thirteen. And it has been spent except for six thousand dollars for the saddle. Okay. I just want it. I can't. And I get can't. It it's, I know, it's spent. I know. It's, but I it's, know. you can't make these go away. I'm trying. I, know. I, I really am. You're driving the accountant nuts. 
I'm not trying to be mean to you, but, but by the time you get to the end of the subsequent year, for heaven's sake. But no, th this is what yeah. was encumbered in the first place. That's correct. Of, of the 98,000, what Mike is saying. The last month, and I didn't think to bring the October end with me, it did only show 6,000. You have, no, you you have no. open, balances, open balance encumbrance <laughs> for 12. Okay. It's 6000 and this is on page 15, $6,410, and it's the saddles, the ones that yeah, have been no here and back. Yeah. That's right. all, the only 12 money open, $6,000. I'll behave myself. That, that, that number cannot change, just like the budget cannot change. That's correct. It's fixed. Okay. Fixed numbers. Um, all set, Mary Lou? That's it. Um, a couple other comments. Uh, I'll add the two items that Mary Louise brought up on the building permits. Um, the 2013, 213,000, um, I was curious just going back in history with the ups and downs of building construction, mm -hmm. how that's bounced around and it's, it's, it's pretty close. I looked at November year to date, not that December is going to change much. It's very close to 2012, mm -hmm. which was 222,000. If you go back to 2009, which I would guess was probably the low point of construction, that was only $137,000. Yeah. Yeah. And then if I go to 2007, which was essentially before things um, started going down or whatever, is 164000 mm -hmm. So I That's think it's, it's good news from the, not, not so much from a town revenue standpoint, but from the um, development that's going on that it's staying yeah. at that level right. over a couple of years. Yeah. Um, on the parking lots, um, Mike's adjustment caught my attention, but um, one of the things I was interested in is a comparison to 2012, and even with the $24,000 adjustment, the parking revenues are 526000 um, which compares to 423000 yeah. in 2012, so that's a huge 24% um, um, jump. I've got a few other issues, Mike, but I, I think that they're going to be covered in the course of your other line items. So rather than going through them here, why don't we right. hit them there? Okay. The next item is under RSA 3210 transfers. And what we're talking about here is basically the Board of Selectmen granting permission for specific line items, and I'm talking about the MS7 line item, which would be the executive elections, etc. Understanding <coughs> that potentially they're going to go over budget and that we are granting them the permission to have monies transferred in. But because of our reporting, we actually do not have to designate where the money is coming from. And so I've taken a look at this, and if you look on page 16 of 16, which is right after the the forecast is the first the first of the the uh, expenses. I have three candidates right now um, in the executive <coughs> if if you decide to put twenty thousand dollars away for the um, uh, books uh, I have I know what it is. Code the code book. the code books. Code book. Okay. I guarantee you that the executive department will go over. It's going to be tight to begin with, but I think it's going to go over, and especially if you push the 20. You only had 16,000 available. If you put 20,000 as an encumbrance, you're over. Then down in emergency management, it's, it's already over by $900. It's a small account, but we're over. And similar is patriotic purposes way down below. It's a $1,800 account. It's over by $183,000. When I did an analysis of highways and municipal. I looked at it in the gross. And when I did that, I see the gross together. Right now, I estimated what the amount of money that would be spent in December at 380000 They're asking for 125000 in POs, which is an encumbrance that we'll discuss then compared it to last year's encumbrance plus the budget. Mm -hmm. nah. uh, See, I need no, that number. It's going to get me. Uh -huh. And it comes up with a $26,000 positive. In essence, I'm saying that they should stay positive. Yeah. However, because they have multiple lines within the MS7, I can guarantee you that some are going to go over, some are going to stay under, right. but in, in, in total. Right now, I can't tell you which ones are going to go over and under. So in a lot of ways, it's almost like I need a carpet blend, uh, blessing for DPW. I think they'll be okay in total, but 
they're going to be plus and minus on this, which is not unusual for that department. That's my coverage in regards to the transfers. I ask what else you'd like to know. Um, I, I believe that there's a requirement that we make a formal motion mm -hmm. on this, and um, it, it sounds like the executive is a maybe, depending on what's decided on the code book. But it sounds like the others are, are, are either have happened or are going to happen. Um, so at any rate, um, the numbers are very small on emergency management and, and patriotic purposes, literally several hundred dollars. Um, uh, let's let's try this as a motion and, and see if it works for, for, for you guys. But um, I would make a motion that we authorize um, exceeding the 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 authorized spending limit combination of 2012 encumbrances and 2013 budget for the emergency management patriotic purposes and selected lines within the DPW department providing that DPW overall the collection of all of the MS7 accounts um, comes in under its overall budget as Mike's indicated he thinks it will at this point. Does that work? Say so, yeah. that, that covers us right now. Would somebody like to second that? Or? I'll second it, but you didn't include planning. Planning is, has grants in it, and grants don't um, yeah. so they don't count. In essence, they what happens watch. with grants is you get to add that money back to the budget because they're in mm -hmm. unanticipated because you're receiving income. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the yeah. planning department actually will be under budget mm -hmm. if you take the grant line out, which is there's like $25,000 in there. So okay. that, that's why I did not list that one, but good question. What you're saying is that it's a wash for planning. Right. With yes. The yeah. 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 I want to comment now. That I could, would you, if I could make one to that one before we move off. Um, I, I couldn't quote you chapter and verse of the statute, but, I, but my recollection is the authorization to exceed the authorized spending level when grants come into play is actually written right into the it uh, statutes. No. It's not something, there's, there's nothing that's gray in, in what Mike is suggesting there. So, Mary Louise? I'm opposed to this motion. I have said for years, including in my years in the Budget Committee, that this is an entire bu operating budget. The selectmen have the latitude to spend it within the confines of their authority. I want to see, and I want the Budget Committee to see, because this involves the Budget Committee as well, where the lines have gone over and where they have gone under. I think this is artificially fooling around with the budget. I am absolutely opposed. Could I comment? Yes, sir. Um, and I, I agree with you. And as I stated earlier, because of the RSA, where we report monthly exactly what you're talking about, we do not have to designate where the money's coming from. So therefore, I do not change the budget. Mm. I do not change the reporting. Okay. And you will see exactly what you're requesting, which is the over and under yeah. by account. So therefore, the motion um, gives the authorization, but you will see exactly, you know, okay, emergency management probably won't, won't move at all. So when you see the report next month, you will see that it's over by exactly $976. I will not make a change. It will not go away. Then why so are we making a motion? Because then it, get, then it makes it legal that that specific line in the MS-7, emergency management, was allowed to go over and that we know we're funding it from some other place. Well, have we not the authority to expend the... We're, we're actually exercising that authority with this motion. That's exactly what you're doing. Mary Louise, if, okay. you, if you look, um, and as a matter of fact, I'll give you this, but we had a legal opinion from the town attorney um, on December 5th, which explained all this. Do I don't like so the idea of this transferring. We're not, right. we're not, you're not, no. you're, I think you're missing Mike's okay. point. Authorized we are not changing the budget. You right. are going to see it. Right. All we were, right. are doing is, is exercising that authority that's in 3210. See okay. what we did. You okay, all, we'll see that. okay. All in favor? Opposed? I'm going to abstain. I'm still thinking. Okay, 401 with uh, Slep and Woolsey. Thank abstaining. you. No, she's not abstaining, she's thinking. <laughs> the, vote's, the vote's done, so I think she said she abstained. Okay, Mike, do you want to move on to the next one? Uh, Year-end uh, forecast. As shown in your report, um, I had at the end of November $414,000 or $450,000 estimated difference. I looked today at the current 
open POs for that are out there right now, it's 173,000, where this report showed 151,000. So there is a $21,000 increase in POs, which means that it reduces the amount of money. Uh, so right now, just taking that one piece into account, uh, the forecast is now 393,000. So we're still right around 400,000. Mike, can I ask a quick question? Th that 21,000 that mm -hmm. it increased, and, and possibly even some of the 151,000 could have been paid. I, I don't know. Is that 21,000 totally unrelated to the 100 and? Um, 97,000 that's been requested by the three departments, 91,000. Yes. Okay. To the best of my knowledge, none of the POs that were requested in the, in the encumbrances have been or cut. A part of that. So okay. you, have, you have POs being cut every oh, day, you have POs being retired every day, but I wanted to see what today's look. Yep. So right now it's 20, 21,000 higher than, than it was at yeah. the end of November. Yeah. So, And that's, that, that adds to what you spent, so therefore it reduces the available. Mm -hmm. And as I was talking earlier, what was that new number, Mike, right, for me? Uh, 393. 393. Thank you. It's, it's a moving target, but right now that's the number I have. As we talked about earlier, uh, employee separation. Um, there's two accounts that I deal with there. <coughs> it's in personnel administration on page 3. You have two lines, employee separation cost and then bank buyback. Um, they're budgeted at $212,000 and $120,000. Those numbers have been constant for throughout the years. And right now, employee separation, we had very few separations, i.e. retirements or whatever. And so right now, that account is over, is unexpended by $153,000. In the buyback program, it came a little over what we expected, so there's a negative 11. But when you add the two, there's $142,000 of money that's available to put to the trustee of the trust funds mm -hmm. in the uh, employee separation account to put and try and reduce the open liability that we've got out there. Now, if we did that, then the number that we're talking about, the 393, mm -hmm. drops down to about 250000 mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay? Now, with the separation, if the board was to authorize the expenditure, what I would do is to write a journal entry, which would then expense it and then put it into an IOU. Okay. That gives us the ability that later in, as we get further out in December, i.e. January, when we're dealing with it, if we find that we're now coming too close, or we're going, we're going to, you know, we're not going to make the bottom line, I can pull the journal entry and I will not have sent the money. And um, the trustee of the trust funds are aware of this. I think they have a meeting on January 14th or something like that. So we'd be doing the idea right then. So um, I'll probably come with a motion next week to authorize me to do journalize it, to set it up. But it's one of those things that I can use to uh, level out if we end up finding something that's coming, coming uh, unforeseen. But it won't drag out. No. You think it should be resolved in January sometime? Yeah. 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 Mike, in, in, in rough terms, what is the um, liability that we have today? I seem to remember a number like 1.2 million or... Yeah, it's up there. It's, it's, it's that large. And so this would, this would help put something against that in case we had some very large um, withdrawals. It gives us a cushion mm -hmm. towards the future. And, and it's, it's conservative accounting to put the money... We've got it, put it away, it's authorized, it makes sense and it's only helping the future. And if I remember correctly, we this fund was created roughly two or three years three ago. Years ago I think, I think. Three yeah. years ago. Three years ago. There was nothing in the Warren article that actually funded it, just mm -hmm. essentially yeah. the, mm -hmm. the bucket to place the money. I think we've made two deposits yes. into it, and roughly how much money is there in that fund now? I didn't look, but Something it's less it's than 200000 Yes. So, so essentially, you know, what we've got is, is if all of a sudden you know, yeah. everybody retired 1.2 <laughs> million. We, we've only got something less than 200,000, and this would be a nice addition to that. If we did run into a, you correct me if I'm wrong, but if we did run into a situation, let's assume we get it up to 325,000 or mm -hmm. something like that with this addition. If we did run into a situation in a future year where, for whatever reason, and stuff can happen in the legislature that drives retirements or whatever, that fund can be 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 tapped 
for paying the expense associated with this mm -hmm. over and above the ability of yeah. the line item in the operating budget mm -hmm. to find it so fund it so um, I'm completely in favor of uh, particularly the amount that Mike had suggested which is the amount mm -hmm. that it's underspent Just this this two hundred and and, and twelve thousand dollar number is I think Mike believes that that's basically a good number if everything kind of happened in a in a flat mm -hmm. linear fashion but of course there's there's ups and downs so anytime uh, you've got a year like we're looking at here where where you think the average is 212 and only 58 that means there's going to be another 150,000 or whatever yeah. that swings the other way in a future year yeah. just real quickly like the because the money's turned over to the trustees it goes in a lump with the trustees investment it's not a separate account like a capital reserve it, fund. Is, it is a separate account oh it is it's, so yeah. the interest will accrue yes ma'am oh good yeah it's it's just like a capital reserve yeah. okay. it's set up that way so and they're so holding the money but it's but it's accounted for and, and it gets its owner self-funding a little bit with the interest yes ma'am is mike is there any particular reason that that you wouldn't like just to have that authorization I'll, tonight I'll, I'll take the authorization tonight i don't see that there's going to be any new information and we'd just be going over the problem with it yeah. would somebody like to make a motion <laughs> also move I will. to authorize the uh, in the amount of 142 second Seconded by uh, Sletman Pierce. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Hey, okay. um, year-end spending and encumbrances. Uh, departmental encumbrances. As once again on the year-end savings analysis uh, that was presented to you in your financial statements, um, we had a list of encumbrances that each department put forward, and the PD put forward thirty thousand. Fire Department 40 and the DPW put forward 125,000. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked these through, and so my recommendation is to allow the departments to cut POs for the specific projects that were listed in their memos, mm -hmm. and that will build your open POs. But it, in essence, it's already been worked through into the analysis for the savings of the year. So lock in the money. I'll so move. I'd be happy to move on that. Somebody like to second that? I will uh, second it. I'd like, I have a couple of questions. Um, so the uh, 195 ish, almost 200,000 in those encumbrances has already been sort of subtracted before we come up with the 393? Yes. Okay. It, which became about 249 with our decision on the right. transfer to the compensated out. We're right around 250, at least the best estimate I have right yeah. at the moment. I think we have to be very careful getting down really tight. That, that kind of makes me a little nervous uh, because uh, we spend, uh, you figure a $25 million budget, we spend uh, over $2 million a month. That means we spend a half a million practically every week. 250000 is not like I'd like to use to have when I didn't have any money. I always like to have at least a week's money in the bank. I don't you know have 142,000 in your pocket with that that entry that I just made for the separation. So that be close, huh? That money I can pop right back if, okay. we, if we have an issue. Did we all agree on all those encumbrances? I wasn't too pleased with some of those. I don't uh, know. Uh, go ahead and, and speak up. Well, I don't have the list right in front of me. Can we make that? Can we talk about this at another meeting? Because I didn't have that on Marty, my. This is the the second meeting we had this purposely last time as a preliminary discussion Mike. Mm -hmm. This whole list was provided and it was on the agenda last week. I understand but I, it is on the agenda this week though for that. I don't have... I don't about mental encumbrances I believe that's that's the way I took that. Your end that spending and, and encumbrances. Yeah, I understand that but I, I don't remember us deciding which ones we were going to approve and disprove because there were some that we, they thought they absolutely needed and there were some that thought they'd be nice to have. And we felt, did we chop out the ones that are nice to have? I don't remember doing that. That's I, I, don't, I did not interpret the communication as really neat and nice to have. Yeah. I interpreted it as um, <coughs> this is what we would like to have, and this is the absolute minimum. And the absolute minimum is what we're going with. No, we're, we're what the motion that is made was Mary Louise's motion, but I believe was the amount requested which was thirty thousand one hundred and fifty dollars in police thirty five thousand six twenty six in fire and hundred and twenty five thousand five eighty four in dpw and then there's the general code 
um, issue, which we'll get to on the next item, which I've, may I've got I've got fire at forty thousand nine twenty six off of the email of eleven fifteen. Can I uh, show you what I'm saying? I don't think that was taken out of the budget. I don't think it was taken out of his request. I know that was Yeah. Nine, nine, five, oh. Hundred. <coughs> Did we just do this stuff already? Oh, is that like they do? Yeah, that's it. I have no idea. What that's why I clarify that. All right. Um, the um, difference that, that like when Nichols and I were going over, is the $5,300, which is the personal protective equipment, replacing all the flotation devices by mm -hmm. first responders. So yeah. the number that I use in my analysis and projections is 40926 If I may comment briefly, um, Mr. Chairman, you know, we, we draft an annual budget. We have surrendered $750,000 to overlay at the tax rate setting. And when you plan a budget, the taxpayers expect you to expend the budget. And if you don't expend the budget, the Budget Committee looks at you and says, well, why are you requesting X when you only spent Y? So I think it's logical at the end of the year when you have a pretty firm idea where you're going. You certainly don't want to overspend, but that's the time to pick up the needed items that you've held back on all year. Uh, I don't dis. I can see your, I can see your point on that, but I think well, so spending it down the last penny every year, regardless of it's needed or not, is beyond the pale. I didn't say regardless of whether it was needed or not. Because that's some of the that some of your needed. government agencies already do that, as Mr. Bino probably testified to. They have to spend every last penny of their budget because they want to get the same amount or more the next year. That's the way it was in the company I worked for. The managers played that game right to the limit. I do not think, as a responsible person to, that's responsible for the taxpayers, that we should look at it that way. I think we should be frugal, period. And if you, if you feel like you want to spend this last few pennies, be my guest. I'm not very enthused about it. I think that's an exaggeration. These are <laughs> items that have been needed, and you know the departments hold back, and they're directed to hold back until the end of the year, until the dust settles, and we know what kind of money we've got. Um, I, we've had a little bit of philosophy here, so I'll throw my philosophy in, if, if, if I could. Um, on one level, um, I, I, I don't agree with Mary Louise's point that the Budget Committee is going to have a problem if we don't spend all of the money. I think it's perfectly legitimate, um, you know, that, that, that there's money that is unspent for, you know, whatever reason. If the money unspent was 5 or 10 percent of the budget, then, yeah, wh where were you guys coming from asking for all that money? But what we're talking about here is, is percentages that are literally 250,000 is roughly about 1% mm. uh, of, of the budget. So I think it's very reasonable. I wouldn't be happy if this list spent it down to, you know, $900 or $5,000 or whatever. But at the end of all of this spending, there is still $250,000 unspent. And I would argue that that number is really 390,000 because of we're not spending the money um, to do with going into the compensated absence fund. We're simply putting that in a different location um, in a conservative um, way. I think one thing about government that is different than um, private industry is, is on a practical level, going over a budget and spending more than the bottom line of the budget is, is, is not really an option. I mean, there may be some technicalities if you had some sort of crazy emergency. So it's not really an option. So what you do is you've got certain things that you need. They're not time sensitive. It's not going to hurt you if you purchase it in November or December versus purchasing it in March or April or May. So those are the things that you kind of leave on the back burner till you get to a point of the year. And we're at that point of year in, Dece in December where you say, geez, I guess there's not much room in the way of for, for surprises at this point. So now, um, you know, uh, I believe, whether I was police chief, fire chief, DPW director, or whatever, um, that I can purchase those items and still not overexpend my budget. I think one of the things that, that 
I'm very happy with of the way this is going down this year is, is the communication and the transparency that's associated with it and that we started talking about this in, in October of November. Um, we have a list of the items before it's a done deal of, of what those items are. Um, and at the end of the day, there's still 250 or 390,000 unspent, depending on how um, mm -hmm. you know you want to look at it. I must admit that um, I, I, I don't understand in detail what every little, some of them I do, some of them I don't, what every little item is here, but I suspect the police chief, the fire chief, and the DPW director do, and I, I, I think that they've managed their yeah. um, budgets. So I, I, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with I, this. I just want to add one comment, if I may uh, comment. I'm okay with the police department, but I'm very unhappy about the public works department. So that's where it is. So if that means I have to vote against the whole smear, I will. Or as an alternative, Mike, if there's particular items or item in there, you could certainly make an a motion to amend it and remove that item if you. I wish. don't have the sheet with me because it was not on the agenda, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Let Any see the further I discussion? Somebody shows me the list. I can make a comment, and if you would be so generous, thank you. <coughs> On the yeah. Mr. Chairman, also when we're talking about the monies, um, there is also there's right now according to my numbers, there's sixty-two thousand dollars worth of grants that have been spended. So expended. So therefore, you know that's another oh, in yeah. essence wash. Yeah. yeah, but it, no, but actually it's 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 showing it's expended, but. The budget could be expanded by that, revenue. so there's another sixty-two thousand dollars in accounting terms that have not been spent. So that are showing up on the revenue side, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, my comment would be here is uh, rec minimum rec uh, required according to the director of public works of fifty thousand five seventy-seven. That's what I would like to go rather than a one twenty-five five eighty-four. So that makes all three departments. Say, what is this taking out? He has, he's provided the list. Which yes, I know, but yeah. well. I didn't bring that list with me tonight. Here, I'll show it to you. I didn't this think is basically keep what Keith was saying he was after. This is what he was saying he would like at a minimum. Oh, so you got to so take Mike out the Exeter Road pipeline camera. No. That's no, in, that's, that's it here. Oh, that's the minimum that he this needs. This is the minimum list. Of the other stuff. All of these are also in okay. the full list. So you're going to get rid of the manhole covers? You know what those do. All right. The Tamrex proof covers. Well, those keep the water from bubbling yeah, up through the right manholes. Yeah. Yeah. Down, did it? Yeah. <laughs> so Mike has, has made a motion to amend. Do we have a second for that motion? Okay. The motion on the amendment fails for the lack of a second. Um, I would just also add to the discussion is 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 that there is no law that that prevents us, if for some reason we wish to, from amending this at next week's meeting, um, other than items where POs have gone mm -hmm. out. In, in between now and, right. and, and next week or whatever. So, um, Mike, what was the um, total amount of, of, of I'm that? coming up with 196.659. Okay, that sounds, I have 191, but adding the 5,300, so that sounds right. Yeah. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Uh, motion passes 4-1 with uh, Selectman Pierce uh, opposed. Uh, the other the other issue under the year-end spending and encumbrances is the code of ordinance update, the general code, and yeah. we did receive an estimate uh, dated 12-17 addressed to uh, Mr. Welch, and when you add them together, they come up relatively close to $20,000, and so that's the number I've used, um, but it all depends on what the board wants to do. Comments, questions, discussion? We need to do this. Yeah. We need to get going on that we code book. Motion. I will um, I'll, I'll second for, for with discussion. And, and with I'll, I'll be honest, I, I've got mixed emotions. I absolutely feel um, that, that we have to have um, <coughs> the ability to access our, our, our ordinances and our policies and and, and so on and so forth, and that they have to be reasonably up to date. It was interesting. I went to a few municipalities, and I thought Portsmouth in particular was interested because they even indicate when it was last updated. And 
on the Portsmouth website, it says they were last updated on December 18th, 2013, which is last Wednesday, mm -hmm. which leads me to believe that they've probably got a process where it's constantly yes. being updated as, exactly. as things go on. I know from, from looking at, at the general code website or whatever, mm -hmm. um, it appears there are some communities that will go with a quarterly update. There are some that will do it annually, whatever. And and I think I think by just about any standard, um, we're 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 a little out of whack by being two or three years behind at this point. You can't you can't yeah. do things like if you're a resident or even a, t a town yeah. employer or selectman for that matter, go to an entertainment ordinance and see what the current ordinance is because it doesn't reflect the Warren articles from. 2012 or 2013 or whatever. On the other hand, I have a concern, and I'll, I'll direct this to Fred, is, is, is this, meaning using the general code company and all that, the, the only way to do it or the best way to do it or alternatives? I know back in 2011, right. when this was first done, <coughs> you must have investigated that or whatever. So there's no question in my mind we need yeah. to do it. But I'd like to direct it to Fred. Is this we, the best way? We did investigate this back. I think it was 2009, and maybe it was 2000. 2011 is when yeah. the book first yeah. we showed went, up. We went through quite a long process of figuring out who we should go with and why, mm -hmm. and uh, we did a lot of research as far as what are other towns doing, and they're all using general code in this general area. Mm -hmm. There are some towns that are doing it on their own, but they yeah. have the staff the resources. Ex exactly. You look at you look at some of these yeah. towns, yeah. and they may have five people where we've got two or right. whatever. Yeah. Uh, so those towns are, you know, we wish we were in the same position, but we're not, so we have to farm it out somehow. Uh, we did go out and look for quotes, and general code was the cheapest. Um, they also worked easiest with us. Um, most of the other companies that do this kind of work, you, you'll notice in here that uh, I think under Section A, we'll provide a disk for three hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Word. That's Microsoft that's Word. in Word, so that we can we can we can edit it, uh, and we've asked for that specifically. Other co companies will not do that. You have to take it in a PDF format, and they're the only ones who can revise it. Uh, General Code gave us the option of doing that or, in fact, going online with them. So when he, we just give somebody um, their address mm -hmm. or publish, uh, publicize it, yeah. and you can go online and, and, and look at the entire code, and they'll keep it up to date whether you want it monthly, weekly, quarterly, a annually, whatever. It's, it's a, a large extra cost mm -hmm. uh, because they're administering the entire thing. So we decided that this was probably the best way to do it, and it was the cheapest way to do it. Uh, the $20,000 will bring all the codes that we have up to date. Um, there are a number of codes that we didn't publish simply because we didn't have the resources to do it at the time. But yeah. this will bring everything up to date, uh, including all the selectmen's regulations. It, it appears to me from the quote that you had that, you know, once this has brought it up to date, that we're looking at roughly a $5,000 annual expense to keep it up to date? Uh, something in that order. And, and my suggestion would be that we do that semi-annually. Uh, we do it right after town meeting sometime in April, beginning of May, and get all the town meeting actions and so forth out of the way, and then come the fall, just before we go into mm -hmm. writing warrant articles and so forth, yeah. any regulations that are enacted up to that point, we do, we do them at that point. Mm -hmm. So that we're current. My point was more from a cost standpoint, just to I make the point. It's, it's not a $20,000 annual expense. No. We're at that level because of catch-up. Right. It's looking like it's more of a $5,000 annual expense based well, on his, his comment um, in there. So they've been giving us um, very healthy discounts. Um, so I think this may be less than five thousand when you write down to it. Should we be adding this to the town manager's section forty one three oh two? I mean it's gonna be an ongoing expense. Well I don't budget. mean now, but I mean should yes. we yeah. yes. shouldn't if, we if that's what it's, if basically it's ongoing. I'm I'm not sure. I, I Fred made a reference two thousand eight, two thousand nine that code book and the associated PDF file showed up in like August of September of 2011. Yeah, published and, yeah. and I, I never saw anything before that, so it, maybe some of the work started in 2010. I don't know, but yeah. the culmination of having a product yeah. was yeah. an end you product was 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 yeah. was 2000. Um, We're not going to stop voting for stuff, so we might as well have it as an ongoing experience. Oh no, I I, I agree. Yeah, I, I think that right. I, I I I think I don't know why that they the hindsight it probably should have been in yeah. the. Um, yeah. 2014 the budget, budget but fortunately it's five thousand dollars and yeah. we're finding a way to make it work this year I suspect so I do have a couple of questions mr. chairman yep. um, 
I was looking through this document. I think you all have it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of questions in here. Are we? Did you go through this whole thing, Fred? And make sure there's anything else we want to do in this. About 50 items they have for you to pick and Actually, choose. Actually, we've done all those things. That's the standard format. We're just okay. doing additions at this point. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So we basically what we're doing, we're adding the 10 and the 14 and the uh, up to five grand to come up with. How, I don't understand the math there. Okay. They gave us a price of between 10825 mm -hmm. and 14350 to do everything up to uh, up to last year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Last year, for last year's, they gave us a price of $5,000. Okay. We did quite a bit of work last year. Then we have to add in the 350 down there to have it on the Word. The 350, we're going to have that on the Word disk so that we'll, we'll have Correct. less work for us to do. Correct. Put it right up online immediately as soon as we get it. Okay. Anything that else? That we, uh, Mike's point of $20, anything else that we need out of this, all this gibberish on the other pages? Actually, we've done it all, so. Uh. <laughs> That's right. Good. Thank you. But you can work on it if you want to. No, I looked through it and I said, wow. That's all I said. Uh, <laughs> That's what I said. Refresh my memory. I believe we Sir. had a motion and a, and a second. The motion was by? I move to accept this as an encumbrance. Okay. Did we have a motion? Am I, we're doing so many of these. <laughs> I will second it. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? I think you did already. Yeah, I, I think, think you did. did. So that's yeah, right. I thought it. But All in favor? Unanimous. Yeah, so right. our 250 right. became 230, whatever. Okay. And you're down to minus one here a little bit, the rate we're going. Yeah, yeah and that will push the executive over as, we, yeah. as we talked about. Well, Got to do it. Can't go below zero, gentlemen. <laughs> but so, so, <laughs> but so we, we're, I'm going to be back next week. Mm -hmm. and, and you so may have something else. And I may else. have some other issues, okay. and then I'll put that so on my list of things. So at the very least, you'll bring up a 3210 yeah. transfer related to executive, and there may be something else or yep. whatever. And if we get below zero, you'll be here to bail us um, out. I would add just one other caveat, and I think it goes more to public works than anywhere else, and to our approval of, of all of the requests for year-end spending encumbrances. Um, my assumption in our, our approval was that a department would not overrun its budget with the approval of this year-end spending and right. encumbrances taking into consideration the grants. Is that no. fair, Mike? No. Okay. Um, and I, I think what we'll do, Mr. Chairman, is even though we'll run the purchase requisitions out, we're going to hold them for a little while. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Just to make sure. Yeah. Mike, uh, Just final... Just hold them until December 2014. No, 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 no. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. Final item on your list, Mike, default budget adjustments? Yes. I wasn't sure who had what paperwork, so I've brought some. Oh, thank you. I've looked at a December 23rd oh. version. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I do have it here. Yep. That's okay. Thank you, Mike. All right. So this is basically Appendix B, which is um, when the, the top part talks about where we're where the budget committee is. Uh, there's three blocks right now that are showing up as suggestions, and since we didn't have this, the meeting. Uh, the budget committee due to the weather, uh, right. they're still open items, so they actually have not been voted. However, they do have an effect on what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So below the black <coughs> line, the default budget that was prior already approved by the Board of Selectmen is $25,686,799. Yep. Yep. We have, and I'm adding, merit pay of <coughs> $17,666. This is the effect in 2014 of the raises that were given in 2013 to the non-union employees. Correct. If, if you did not put it here, I would put it into all the departments. Right. I'd put it into admin, I'd put it into fire, I'd put it into police. So therefore, when this number is allowed to be booked, I will yeah. do, do a journal entry next year to charge here yeah. and then credit the, the departments because the budget is not there for that money. Mm -hmm. They're not big dollars, but it's something. If I could just add, when you make a decision to give people raises, $17,666, you not only incur an expense, it may not be that whole amount, but you incur expense in that year, and then because it's implemented in whenever, it could be December, it could be April or whatever, you have that expense in the following year, and that is a commitment to yeah, that individual. It so, it's, it's, so it's the nature of, of, of right. wages. In yep. the case of uh, the thing that's a little bit different about the union versus the non-union is is in the 
um, union collective bargaining agreements. That's something that's on a warrant. The projection of the cost is made, and the voters voted that, and then the subsequent year, Mike mm -hmm. rolls that number into the budget. But yeah. this, I, I think, this is no different than what's been going on no. uh, for years and years. It's yeah. just, I, I think that there was all the discussion around the conservation coordinator that just, I think a lot of people just weren't aware right. um, mm -hmm. that that was the case, but it's it's nothing new and there's nothing yeah, wrong. Every year. Right. Yeah. <coughs> uh, the second item is liability and general insurance. And what I've done is I've compared and taken their quotes mm -hmm. and compared yeah. it to the budget that I had set up. And the li general liability insurance is $52,000, almost $53,000 less than what I had budgeted. So therefore, I would, I would have you uh, adjust that down. Health insurance, municipal, um, it, it sounds funny that the percentage went down, but the number went up. And I explained that the last time, there's 10600 And that's because I do it as a comparison of what I'm actually spending in a month. And we had adjustments so that the spending in a month went up, even though the percentage went down from where I forecasted. It, it's going to generate a $10,000 increase to the budget. Workman's comp, same thing as general liability. Um, when I took their quotes, and compared it to the budget, is $47,000. So basically, there's $100,000 of insurances that are coming down mm -hmm. uh, due to the quotes. Uh, the library health, there's the change that uh, reflects uh, the percentage that I had forecasted as to what it actually came in. So when you do the math, yep. um, the new number I'm requesting the board to uh, approve is 25614509. Also moved. Um, I'll second it and, and the question, Mike. Um, just anything else um, that is, is somewhat dynamic that may change this again that you just is not solid enough that you wanted to put it on the list or does this look pretty? No. Um, when, you, when, when I went through everything, there's very few things that um, insurances are one, that, that it's a contract. Yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. But like I went through other changes that were being made to the accounts, they don't they don't reflect in the default. The default's set correctly, and only these ones I feel are the ones that are going to change. And this is very similar to what I did last year too. Okay. What one other question I should ask when we're talking about merit pay, but I assume that merit pay, what you're doing is you're adding seventeen thousand six sixty six, but the actual number that would show up in the default budget would be seventeen six sixty six plus, plus the fourteen thousand and actually the budget's twenty five thousand, but yeah, you're right, it's the fourteen. Fourteen thousand yes. something. Yeah, so that number we'll we'll get right thirty one ish. Right. We have a motion, we have a second for the discussion. Yeah, I have a little problem with that because we're spending money that was not approved by the legislative body to put into the default budget. I am strictly against that because the voters never had an opportunity to vote on it. So that's my feeling before we even take the vote. It's, 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 it's an interesting point, yeah. and, and I don't know if you've ever spent a lot of time thinking about it on an analytical level, but with raises, I, I don't know how you, I, I don't know how you get around that. I, I don't know. Unless you put, as we did, you're actually giving raise, uh, the raise is budgeted in the merit pay account. So there actually right. is money there, there to give raises That's correct. A part of it was. Majority of it was. So therefore, yes, I'm hitting the departments, but the money actually was budgeted in the merit account. So that's really the way I see that the, the, the people have voted that there should be some amount of raises for uh, the non-union, and right now the budget is approximately 14 something. I, I agree with you that there's a money, was money in the account, but it wasn't the full amount. The legislative body never got a chance to hit that extra money that we're going to spend. And I think that is totally wrong according to the way I interpret it. You're referring to the three thousand dollars. The difference between what was budgeted and what we actually end up the spending. Three thousand. That's okay. correct. Roughly. Yeah. I, I don't. And I know it's nickel dime, but I think it's a point. I, I don't. You know, I, I'll just comment on that. I, I don't have any heartache at all with that because of the trans. The first of all, that not a huge amount of money in the transparency. In, in the way the process um, had well, played out. Well, I think one could argue successfully when you prepare a budget for the next year, like we've gone through this fall, one, if one plans to give somebody a raise, it should be in the budget, and the body should be able to vote on that. That's how I feel. 
I, I, I can't see right now. I'm probably going to change my mind for at least for a while. So okay. if you plan to vote, I'm going to be in the... Okay. We're ready for all in favor. Opposed? Motion passes 4-1 with Selectman Pierce opposed. Mike, I, I think we got through that pretty good. Did you have any questions in regards <laughs> to the financials? You said you might come back at me on something. Hmm? You, you did send me um, questions today. Um, there was like five bullet points. I responded to you um, um, late. No, I, I think I'm um, basically okay. We, we beat up the 415 versus the 137 yep. near-end savings right here <laughs> in the 268,000 swing. Yep. Um, $11,000 posted to full-time summer coverage. I kind of understood it, and I'm not going to debate, you know, where where mm -hmm. lines are applied. That maybe it should have been applied somewhere else, but whatever. But I understand, um, you know, what went on. Um, what we've said is is that DPW will not overrun its overall spending, even with the 125,000 in encumbrances. There will be lines that go over and, and under. And yeah. the only other one is a, a to be determined, a, a, yep. a request that I had made, and I suggest you send this to the whole board as a PDF. But one of the things I asked Mike is on the private details. Um, I would like to see a transactional report which shows the companies and the amounts for both 2011 and 2013. I'm just curious of, of what's driving the huge increases. We had 211,000 in private details in 2011, up from 211 to 322,000 um, in 2012, and now just through November, we're at 372,000. So we're nearly doubling over two years. Here. I'm just curious, is it the electric utilities? Is it Aquarian? Where, just where are they? Um, coming from. So, at any rate. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I uh, have a word with the director, sure. please? Uh, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, um, I wanted to respond to an email. My, my email is down. Uh, I've received a lot of nice Christmas cards, but I did receive <laughs> an email a couple of weeks ago, and I'm going to have to get with um, tech, but I can't reply to emails. And uh, I want to speak about uh, an email from folks down in Ice House, and they pay, uh, according to the email, it was copied to I think all of you. Uh, and it was copied to department heads. Uh, the fire chief responded to that, and they pay $10,000 a year. And the one thing they want to get, and that's there for their property taxes, uh, they want they want to keep their rubbish collection. And that was the gist of their email. They were on a private road. It's always been picked up. It's going down there. They've received the letters. They're, it's a private road, but there's public signs on it. These are some of the uh, issues that were addressed. Uh, and they're concerned uh, that uh, with that, uh, effort to eliminate tax or garbage collection that uh, they're concerned about other services being eliminated. And uh, just as a drill, and, and, and the reason I'm bringing you into this, um, Director, is uh, I, uh, I, I uh, took out the uh, Plosnick and Anderson uh, 2000 audited uh, statement. And specifically, I'm, I'm going on uh, Schedule A2, the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, general fund statement of appropriations, expenditures, and encumbrances for the year ended December 31st, 2000. When we're talking about this trash issue and these, these folks, and, and last week uh, the chamber was in and they're concerned about this. And there have been some hefty increases in, in the budget in the last 14 years, and now we're working on 14. And I'd just like you to do a little scrub in a couple of minutes, not right now, and I can get with you. But uh, I'm talking about $18,000 a year, $1,500 a month, is what our line 4323 solid waste collection and 4324 solid waste disposal has risen in 14 years. And we are going after some of these services, that this is the only benefit to some of these people under the encumbrance of they have police protection, they have fire protection, they have sewer. But for the actual usage of public services, the you know, children in school, this is all they get. And my numbers show that we are currently at approximately $1.55 million a year for those two lines. And back in 2000, we're at 1.306. But doing my math, and I'm sure I'm off, uh, I'm showing that we're performing those same services uh, 14 years after the audited statements from 2000, and it's $1,500 a month more that we're spending on those two lines. And yet, we think they're spat, 
and yet we think that that's a waste of money, and yet we think we have to uh, eliminate those services. So I would just like, and, and we've asked, for example, on that, that um, uh, manufactured uh, housing development off Kings Highway that pays an, around a quarter million dollars a year and virtually has no services. It costs 10000 to pick up the trash. And we constantly talk about the expenses. And this, to me, seems to be, uh, along with Attorney Gerald's uh, department, uh, which is flat in 14 years. Good job, Esquire. You're ah, welcome, sir. Ah. Uh, I, I would just like a little data because there, um, I, I think Selectman Woolsey is going to bring forth uh, no, no. Uh, about eliminating trash no. and business trash. No. I, I think I've heard that. No. That's not business trash. That's private roads. I'm, I'm just saying, we're, we're, it's, the numbers here are flat over 14 years. And I just roads. like numbers from you, from a financial perspective. Is, is this driving cost? Is this a real problem uh, when this is the only service that many, many people get? And uh, they pay a lot of taxes. And we're talking about eliminating this, and it's creating a lot of consternation. So if you could do a little drill down, compare those lines what we paid in 2000 and what we're projecting for 2014. And if you could get that at, at your convenience before these Warren articles do come up so people can speak to the floor um, at, at the deliberative and uh, educate the voters. And that's all I have. Thank you. Richard? Question, Phil. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of having accurate, detailed line data mm -hmm. going back to 2000, I, I don't know if you've got that. I know the oldest year that I've got is 2003. Um, by virtue of having a 2005 yeah. budget book and, and yeah. showing 2003 mm -hmm. actuals. This is off uh, the library website. And I'm, I'm right, but the audit is not going to the... I understand that. Yeah. It's not necessarily the internal, internal reports that... They move the numbers do. around and it doesn't go... How, how would you feel, because I know I have 2003, how would you feel if, if what you asked Mike to do went back to 2003 as Why opposed to... Why don't I go back to the best year I can find? Yeah. Love it. Let me deal with that. Thank that's, you. That's and, all I can, and, that's and, all I can yeah. promise. And it is Christmas Eve, sir, and I just wanted to raise that issue. And thank okay. you, sir. I'll thank second you, your motion. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. We're talking about those. You're talking about private <coughs> roads. That's a differentiation. The <coughs> right article that will be coming forward talks about business, commercial. That is not business, nor is it commercial. I don't know what signs you were talking about. I hope they have blue signs for private roads. But there's a totally different situation on private roads. That is a risk. That is a liability to okay. this town, bringing the vehicles onto private roads. Okay. I will see you again next week to talk about encumbrances. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Hopefully. Next item, you, we agreed to slide forward the Rockingham Planning Commission membership item under old business. Um, following Mike, um, I'd like to start it off. Cliff Senate had requested uh, an opportunity to say a few words or whatever. Cliff, why don't you have a seat? And um, I think once, um, you know, Cliff has said what, what he wishes to say, I think the board should feel free to ask him questions mm -hmm. or make comments or whatever. Well, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, for the record, I'm Cliff Sinnott. I'm the executive director of the Rockingham Planning Commission, and I appreciate um, Chair Mr. Chairman's changing the agenda around a little bit. Um, there are, before I get started, and I will be very brief. I just wanted to introduce a couple of people. Uh, Glenn Koppelman here, who is uh, there. He's the current chairman of the Planning Commission. He is uh, the representative from Kingston. Uh -huh. He's the current chair this year. He's also the chair of their planning board. And you and you know uh, Barbara. Mark, Ol Mark Olson, who's uh, one of your commissioners, obviously. Chairman, Ch planning chairman of your planning board and, and one of the commissioners uh, from Hampton. Um, uh, and two alternates here, as you know, Barbara, Barbara and, uh, and Maury. So not that you don't know them already, but um, just to reinforce that they're, your rep they're part of your representation on our, on our organization. Um, the, the reason I, I asked for some time tonight is that I, I, I know that you were going to discuss membership, and I, I saw the, uh, the article in the Hampton Union about the discussion you started at your December 9th meeting, and there were a couple things that were reported, at least in the paper, that um, were really were not quite accurate, and I, I wanted to come and just speak to a couple of those issues, 
really not speak to them. I put them on paper so you have all that and I won't, I won't go over that unless you have questions. But there are two points I did want to emphasize. Um, one being that sort of the nature of the organization and how Hampton relates to that organization. Um, you know, we're, we're not a private organization and we're also not really um, sort of an outside organization. We're created under a state statute, RSA 36, which gives towns the authorization, not the mandate, but the authorization to create a regional planning commission if they want to. So two or more communities, this is, you know, happened in the late 60s and 70s, two or more communities get together and they decide if they want one of these entities um, in their region. And they do that, they take a vote at town meeting, they appoint commissioners that create the commission, essentially. Uh, we call it a board of commissioners, but they are representatives of you, of the, of the member towns. And in our, and, and the state office of planning many years ago established planning districts. They're somewhat artificial, and from time to time they change. But the planning district that we're in here uh, is called Planning District 6. There are 26 towns in it and you're one of those 26 towns. So uh, our board of commissioners is made up of at least two commissioners from each of those communities, except for one, Salem, who's not a member. So that's, that's the, uh, the, the setup. And the, I think the key thing to remember is that those commissioners direct me um, and the staff. It's not the other way around. They approve the work that we do. And if there are things that, for example, your commission commissioners don't like about what we're doing, we'll hear about it, and we'll, you know, we'll we'll, uh, we'll make sure that what we're doing is responsive to what the town of Hampton wants. And I think that's the that's the good part about the way regional planning commissions are set up in New Hampshire. They're voluntary. Towns don't have to join in the first place, and they don't have to contribute dues if they don't like the services they're getting. The second point, and I think this is a one that was um, was raised as a question, is that, and I think, uh, it is, is it, why is Hampton paying dues and becoming a member of the Planning Commission if you already have town staff? And, and a further question was, is it worthwhile? Are you getting uh, something valid for the dues that you're spending? I think that's a great question. I have no objection to anybody asking that question. You should ask that question every year. Um, I think that in Hampton's case, you're getting a lot for your dues. There's a, there's a whole attachment uh, to the letter that I sent that sort of summarizes those <coughs> things that have been going on over the past three or four years that we've been involved with with Hampton. But I think... Um, the question was, since you have a town planner, why should you get the service? Why, why do you need our services? And I would say um, it's a good point, but the interesting thing is, uh, as I pointed out in the letter, every community that has a professional planner in this region is a member of the commission except Salem. And I think they're not members for, for, for different reasons. And it's not that because you have your own planning staff that all of a sudden you don't need services. Because typically the towns that have their own planning staff are the ones that are larger, have much more complicated problems. And <coughs> frankly, if, if it's a small staff, it's probably harder for them than it is in a town that has no planner and gets uh, circuit rider services from us, which Hampton did for, for many years. Um, <coughs> so I just wanted to say, I think, if you look around the region uh, and looked at what those larger communities like Hampton <coughs> get for their dues, even though they have a planning staff, it's, it's quite different. In Portsmouth, for example, the thing they want most from, from the Planning Commission is to make sure that uh, development projects in the region around them are getting the proper review that they need to have. And that their transportation projects 
and they've had a host of them, as you know, over the past five years. Very expensive transportation projects are getting the advocacy that they want them to have in the in the state process. Um, other examples, Exeter and Stratum, they both have planning staff. Uh, they both used our services regularly for all sorts of things, mapping or uh, doing open space plans, whatever it is, because, and this is always, almost always the case, they, their planning staff is tuned in size to deal with the applications that they receive on a, on a you know, weekly, monthly basis, not to do the extra stuff that are, that's sometimes necessary. Updating a master plan, there are very few planning departments in any of our towns that have the ability on their own to update their own master plan. It's too, you know, it's too much sort of added work, typically. A lot of, a lot of towns do what you do, one or two chapters at a time to, to keep the thing up to date and sometimes get some help doing that. Um, in Hampton's case, the things that you have been asking us to do in the last few years the things that your own staff really can't do, one is uh, some specialized mapping work. Uh, you, you wanted some examples of what the new zoning proposal at the beach would look like. So we did a 3D model with our mapping that would show what the, s what the mass of those buildings would look like at the height, at the new height that was being proposed and the setbacks. Uh, the Safe Routes to Schools program, we've been working with that uh, committee to try to get some, some of those uh, travel plan grants that the DOT made available for that program. The planning board a couple of years ago asked us for an affordable housing ordinance to see if the town was, you know, was vulnerable at all under the affordable housing law, whether you were compliant with that. And that involved a lot of work analyzing your uh, property, uh, the, the uh, residential values of, of the town, both rental and owned, data which really doesn't, doesn't exist. It's, it's quite difficult to do. But it's, it was useful for them to have us do it because we have a statutory requirement to look at regional housing needs. So they thought, well, if we did it, the analysis, it would be, you know, advantageous to them to have, to have <coughs> so we did. Didn't charge you anything for it, just did the work. I've uh, been sitting on the downtown uh, advisory committee, on, uh, spending quite a little time on that. Been working a lot with uh, the Beach Commission, doing a parking study a few years ago, advocating for a lot of those transportation projects that you know that they are very, um, uh, intent on on succeeding with especially Ocean Boulevard but also to some extent and in the somewhat more distant future the Underwood Bridge big big things that um, you know the town needs um, anyway th I, I'll yeah, stop. I, I think we got yeah, that you got um, <coughs> before we, we have any comments or questions or whatever I noticed that Mark Olson is the chairman of the planning board is in the audience and Mark is there anything that you'd like to say or Mark Olson, 75 Mill Road. I am the current chairman of the planning board. Um, I appreciate you letting Cliff come in tonight and share his thoughts and our thoughts about the importance of maintaining this relationship. Um, I, I don't really know where this came from. I was brought to the RPC office about a week ago, um, kind of unbeknownst to me. I met John Nye in there who expressed a lot of concern about um, what you have been discussing as far as withdrawing from our relationship with them. As Cliff has mentioned, 26 communities in Rockingham County are members, with the exception of the City of Salem, and I'll emphasize City of Salem, um, being the exception. They're a good active group of people. Um, we wrestle with these types of issues that are beyond what anybody, frankly, in this room or in this community is capable of um, addressing on a, on a regional basis. We do like to maintain our control. We do like to have our say. These folks aren't looking to push anything down our throat necessarily. They're there to kind of coddle us through the process, whether it's securing money or 
what's in our best interest um, based on what our input is. This isn't a this isn't a group of people that are uh, having the tail wag the dog, um, and I think that that's one of the most concerning things that has been said. That RPC tells us they meddle in our business. I don't think anything could be further from the truth, and, and Cliff just reemphasized that. Um, beyond that, I, I don't really know where it came from. As I mentioned, uh, John Nyan came and um, brought it to my attention. Um, it just seems to me that if, if people are trying to save money, there's probably a bigger elephant in the room than, than this. Um, these folks are here to help us. Jamie needs the help. We need the help. And um, I think it would just be a shame if we weren't able to maintain. Well, I, I watched the, that portion of the planning board meeting on Wednesday, and I sent a link mm -hmm. in the starting time to the other selectmen. So if the, obviously Mary Louise was there. So if they didn't see it, they could. Um, you correct me. If I'm wrong, but but a couple of um, perspectives that I have interpretation. Number one is I think that it's and Fred, please comment. Sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong. Give your own comments. But I think number one, I think it's the planning board and the planning department that have the majority of the interface um, for the town of the Rockingham Planning Commission. That's true. V very limited interface. There's been a couple of isolated projects over the years. I've been a selectman for six years, but it's primarily the, the planning board and the town planning department. Two, what I heard in listening to that portion of Wednesday's meeting is I believe that the, the planning board was, was unanimous in the opinions that they express of wanting to retain the relationship with the Rockingham Planning Commission. Is that an accurate statement? That is an accurate statement, yes. Um, and Fred, do you have any comments? Sir? We work with the Commission all the time, obviously in the Planning Department. They work, they work constantly. I do serve on one of the committees, which is the uh, committee currently working on the uh, transportation issues for buses here in town. And uh, per periodically there is some question that will come up through the state. This is one of them. Uh, we have a, uh, a bus terminal here in town or not. Uh, that needs to be discussed okay. because the state is anxious to have it discussed. And um, you do provide resources to us so that we can ingest and debate those things. <laughs> OK. Um, and Mary Louise? Since I'm the culprit, I have gained additional insight into this uh, operation since I have uh, been serving as the select man representative uh, to the planning board. I have, I'm not saying that the whole uh, program is, is no good, but what I'm saying is I have become increasingly concerned. For example, uh, the letter to uh, Commissioner Clement of DOT dated March 12, 2013, uh, where the Rockingham Planning Commission is writing to the DOT to indicate strong support for the state acquisition of the Hampton Branch segment of the former B&M railroad line. It's a couple of the uh, bullet points. It says it will prevent the fragmentation of ownership and future development that would be incompatible with the corridor's use as a transportation facility and preserve it for a variety of potential future transportation and utility uses. It also talks about a corridor that's safe and efficient for bicycle and pedestrian travel. And it will reduce traffic on the Route 1 corridor, particularly during the heavily congested summer months, and help maintain the region's air quality. The Route 1 corridor, it's going to be a bypass. We need that for drainage, if anyone asked. I don't know who's going to rip up the railroad tracks, and I don't know where the money's going to come to make another mm -hmm. roadway going up the old B&M railroad right away. But it's, it's, it's a situation like that that concerns me. That's in your letter. Then when you look at the, um, the grant that was given for the Hampton Center District study, and we went over that in detail on the 18th of December, which was last Wednesday, uh, your um, uh, grant uh, writer, or wh whatever Mr. Matisse's title is, and um, Attorney Gerald was there uh, with me, and he also had, in addition to his comments, he had comments from the uh, uh, building inspector. If, if we are paying grant money for someone to study 
The Route 1 corridor in Hampton, the business district to enhance the district and make it look all pretty and have little walkways and have leasing, uh, parking and so forth. The, the presentation of the Warren article that the voters would be expected to vote on in March was very sloppy. Uh, it included uh, items that certainly raised alarm on the part of the uh, town council and the building inspector and myself. Uh, I don't know what the length of the study was determined to be, but I would expect a more professional presentation from someone who's being paid to do something like that in behalf of this community. Uh, I and we went into detail and it's available on tape um, Can I from just the 18th meeting. Just make the point that we did not do that study. We're on the committee, but the grant came from the New Hampshire Housing Finance Authority to the town. The town selected a consultant to do the work. Jack mm -hmm. Jack Medi. Well, it was that was selected by the planning board, I assume. Um, we did interview a number of firms, um, but ultimately Jack was the recipient of that grant, yes. So it came, this came through the state and through... Not, not through us. Well. We, we, sat, we sit on the advisory committee, or I do, at, at the request of the town. Well, but again, the consultant was not selected by the Rockingham Planning Commission. That's correct. selected by the Hampton Planning well, Commission. We, we did choose the Jack Meddy, yes. Okay. U.S. has participated as active member of downtown Hampton. This is your... This is your... Good. On the advisory really committee. provided us. Downtown Village Corridor Advisory Committee, funded from dues and transportation planning grant, no cost to Hampton. I, I uh, certainly appreciate that. Um, you are talking about uh, the Route 1A study, et cetera. That's all state. That's state land. That's not, that's not something that we're going to be paying for. It will be nice to see a nice repaved Route 1A. I, I'm just concerned that we're, that we're doing to some extent make work and to some extent doing things like that intermodal transportation study. The state of New Hampshire hasn't got enough money to finish the bridge over the Great Bay. Where's the money coming from for all this? I can understand the little random grants of 41000 to do the Hampton District study, which is awful, by the way. Um, I, I'm, I'm wondering where realism comes into this. I understand planning, but if you're, I mean, we might be looking at the monorail coming to Hampton Beach. That was an old idea. Where I, I, I'm frustrated at what I'm seeing, and some of it um, doesn't seem to be terribly realistic. So I, I admit to being frustrated, and uh, I did uh, open a can of worms, but I have a, well, but there's no sense in sitting here and, and biting your tongue if you see something that bothers you. No, I, I agree with that. And I, I you know, the Hampton um, intermodal study, um, you know, to some extent, and I, and I think I did explain this in the, in the letter, that to some extent what we do is we try to match what, a, what we think a community is interested in doing with trying to get uh, some funding to get it, get it done. And, and that case of the intermodal study um, it was it was a recommendation that came out of the Route One corridor study. It was it was brought to us uh, through that study by by one of your representatives. Mm -hmm. It seemed like a reasonably good idea to me. I think for and it's it's sort of a long term vision. Oh, I'd say. Yeah. And and you're right. There 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 are funding transportation funding problems, and there are a lot more important things to do <coughs> first before that. Um, what we were doing here is, you know, trying to decide whether it was a viable concept or not. And that's the purpose of the study. There was this concept, but we didn't know based on the history of the property, because there was a landfill there, whether it could be uh, redeveloped, whether it was a way to do it without moving the roads around very much so it wouldn't cost very much. And, and that's, in fact, what the consultant came up with, a, a plan that leaves the roads primarily in place just changes how they're used, so it's not so okay. roundabout. Okay. Anyway. Any of the other selectmen, any comments or? Oh, questions? sure. I have a no. bunch of them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Back to this intermodal study down where we're going to take the big loop de loop around south of Hampton and square it off to make it look like an intersection in Kansas. It's going to cost a ton of money to 
tear down all those bridges and to square it off and we'll end up with a very uninteresting and very typical of a Midwestern town. What a waste of money, okay? Tearing it all down is going to cost a fortune. It's going to cost a fortune to build it to replace it. What do you gain out of it? You want a bus parking lot there someplace. You can have a bus parking lot in the middle of that circle you have now or next to it if you want to be pushy about it. And I'll, while I'm on a roll, when it kind of intersection, that winter kind of intersection is part of Hampton's history. You come along with a plan to square it off. I know some of the planning board were hot to trot over it, mm. but if you just square that thing off, you're moving back to Kansas with a squared off intersection. That is part of history. We went through this thing on Winnicunit Road yep. <coughs> with Park Avenue, and they made a mess out of it. The buses couldn't even turn there. Mm -hmm. And then we had to go back and Mickey Mouse it back almost the way it was. Yeah. So my thought about that is, if you're going to tamper with history, let's don't make it worse. Let's improve what we have and keep the atmosphere and the effect we have in Hampton. And it was brought up at your meeting last night by Mr. Nyan that you had all these things like the task program. I'm familiar with that. Those grants were available. They didn't far out of the sky from the uh, Rockingham Planning Commission and the Safe Routes to School, it's the same thing, okay, I'm involved with that, very directly involved with that. There was, there, the, the grants were out there whether you had anything to do with it or not is the point. And the Hampton Beach Area Commission is a state entity. That's not Hampton. If you did a study for them, fine, but that's not Hampton's study. They're, they were created by the state. Hampton didn't create them. We don't own them. Okay, so I'm, that's another point. I got the 101, Route 1, and it's a state in, and the state beach, uh, Ocean Boulevard. Mm -hmm. That's a state road. Yeah. Right. They own it. We can't d touch it legally. That belongs to them. If they want to fix it, they will. If they don't, they won't. We've seen the politics on that, trying to get them to work on, well, if you do this, well, if you do that, <laughs> they'll do it for us. And what is it, R RPC done for us in that arena? I haven't seen too much, no offense, but if you come up with this stuff on the south of town, you come up with this railroad bed where the road's mm -hmm. not wide enough, to, I mean, the railroad bed's not wide enough to have a road. Thank God. I mean, that is, you'd have to take land by eminent domain. <laughs> Somebody'd have to buy it. I don't have any money. The town doesn't have any money. The state definitely doesn't have any money. So that takes care of that problem. Maybe a bike path at the best. So, I mean, even though I think you guys do some wonderful things, and that leads me to a couple of questions. I know that if you don't pay dues, you don't have, you can't vote. Right. But if you don't pay dues, can we still get some of the planning techniques and services available to us? As I think we can, right? Uh, if uh, if our board says we can, as I said, we 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 do what they say. Um, I would I would guess that they would be inclined not to because you're not paying your fair share. Okay, my next that question. is the case with Salem, for example. But but can I respond to a couple of the things you said? Sure. Uh, the Winnicunit Road project. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't our uh, idea. You, you're, you're talking about a different Winnicunit Road project. He's talking about Winnicunit Road at Park Avenue. That's one of them now. Yeah. That wasn't our idea either. Yeah, but we had to Where go back and from? fix it. Yeah. Right. That was that was generated by. It had nothing to do with. Right. That was generated by the school. So and I'm just pointing just out that was a mess. Yes, the school generated that problem. I know. That. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, but not the really one that went across the road. That would not have been an issue. The 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 one here. And the T intersection. Right. Right. That that we did help you get a CMAC grant to get the money to do it. But you hired the engineer to f come up with a design. You didn't like what they came up with, so you didn't mm -hmm. use the money. Right. End of story. Our role was to help you get the funds to get the project done. Okay. I guess my problem is maybe our communication then to the RPC isn't what we think it should be, right. because the voters have turned down that one at kind of Lafayette Road, what, now two or three times? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a message all by itself. It's okay. not just Mike Pierce. But, but we try to respond to what you ask for, and... Well, we're not... Maybe we're not we communicating very okay. well. Can we, Mike, Bill? I, I'm all set. Hey, uh, I'd just like to say Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? No, we're going to go <laughs> Mike, Mike? Real, real quick. I'll real second quick. that. No, he's uh, he's Bill's going to come. Uh, Chairman. Please. 
Uh, I'm not stepping on your traffic on this budget item, and uh, I applaud uh, the selectmen for bringing up the issue and raising concerns. Uh, I applaud Chairman Nichols for, for saying, hey, let's get a job from the sister board. And uh, I'm certainly not going to step on, uh, again, your traffic on, on what you think and what your board members want. Uh, Director Senate, uh, been on the website. Some of the stuff seems a little long in the tooth, doesn't seem real responsive, doesn't seem up to speed. I agree. Um, and, uh, you know, when we, we've just got these um, higher headquarters elements in, in, in our lives, and when you look down at Route 1 and you look at a business that just did 100 years, uh, when you look at all the people that do come to this town and, and all of the, the good, good challenges we have, and I wouldn't <coughs> want to live in this town without any traffic. And uh, I, I find uh, the uh, development uh, for the private sector on Route 1 in this last two or three years in a real tough economy speaks to the purchasing power of the people that live and work in Hampton, the, uh, uh, the tourists that come here that are driven by the hard work of people. And we don't necessarily always see it that it's coming from Washington, that it's coming from Concord or this board, and it's coming from business owners and property owners doing their thing down here. But uh, thank you for your work, and thanks, thanks for coming back uh, in here tonight uh, on the holiday season. Uh, to get a to get a bite of that uh, that steak, <laughs> and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Mike, um, I, I don't know where we go from here. I'll I'll, I'll make my comment. I, I believe that most of the interface is from the planning board and the planner. Um, I don't pretend to understand. I understand some of it, but I understand a very um, small portion. It's eleven or twelve thousand dollars. It's in their budget, and I'm very comfortable. Um, looking to them to to make those kind of decisions and s to simply rely on on the selectman's interface happens to be Mary Louise at the current time as the selectman's rep to the planning board. Um, you, if we're going to keep proceeding with things like this, or you're acting as a pass through, you know, recommending whatever, there's got to be better coordination and better supervision. And I think we we could at least ask the representatives to the RPC to perhaps consult with us. I believe they did consult with the board on that awful T intersection at Winnicott and Lafayette. But we maybe can keep a little bit better line of communication open. But, but when we're seeing messes and, and that that Hampton Center District presentation is a mess. But, yes, a but I, I, mess. I believe that that is a function of the planning board and and to the extent that the Board of Selectmen has influence on that, mm -hmm. the way to affect that influence is via the Selectmen's rep to the planning board in the context of, of the planning board. If I, I, I may, don't... Mr. Uh, Chairman, I want to have a question for Fred. Isn't it true that there was a warrant article passed a while back that has the Chairman have the authority to either along the RPC or not? The Selectmen. Yes. The town meeting passed a warrant article originally allowing the Selectmen to uh, in enroll the town in the Regional Planning Commission and to have charge of that Basically relation. up to us then. Basically. Mm -hmm. You Basically. control the finances anyhow, so. Um, I'm comfortable with where we're going. I don't sense a motion coming from the selectmen to take any action. Does anybody wish to make a motion? Otherwise, I'd like to move on to the next agenda I'll, item. I'll be super brief. The article on the Hampton Center District and Route 1 is so flawed that that should not go on the warrant. If it's something that can be worked on into the subsequent year, but that is terribly flawed and that should not be on the warrant. But take and I'm going to, that's I'm fine, going to but object take, to take it that up as that. our representative to yeah. the planning board in the context of but the As the person who was on, involved with that, I don't know if we can just say that it was all totally flawed. I think a lot of the concepts were very I good. I had nothing to do with but drafting that. I didn't say you yeah. did. Let me finish, please. I'm saying that I was there, and most of the ideas that were melted there, and you were there too, there were a lot of good ideas. To, the idea was to help the businesses downtown. That was the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Now, if it needs to be fine-tuned, fine-tune it, okay? That's the planning board. I didn't say we had a finished product when we got it done with our last meeting. But you sh I'm not blaming the people who attended the meetings, but what I'm saying is when we see a finished product from a professional individual yeah. who has been hired to provide a service, and we're talking about enhancing businesses, I'm talking about depriving residence A landowners, mm -hmm. both in the Drakeside Road area and the Dearborn Avenue mm -hmm. area, because of, of their rights as 
residential property owners because that's the way the the uh, article is drafted and there's no excuse for not having a more a better um, more accurate article presented to the public. Well, that's why okay. it's that's let's, why let's, that's brought let's, to let's the planning board, Mary okay. Louise, to let them we did out talk. the bus. Okay, okay, board. this is, that, okay. that's it. Okay, I, I think we've covered this subject. I appreciate your coming tonight. I appreciate your coming tonight, Cliff. Um, Thank you very much. Thank and you. I don't see, I don't sense any movement to change anything on the board of, board of selectmen or we would have heard it. Thank you. Right. Thank okay. you very much. Shifting back, approval of minutes. Approval of minutes, December 9th. <laughs> okay. I'm page not moving to approve anything, but I have a correction on, <laughs> on page, page one. Page one. Right. Okay, down at the bottom. Uh, Selecting the rules, he made comments as follows. Morelli's festivities, and if they conflict with ribbon cutting at the fire station, amazing parade and turnout parade is being rebroadcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a I'm cattle sure prod. That's rebroadcast. I'm sure. That's well, a cat cattle prod. Rebroadcast for reprod. Okay, page two. <laughs> well, it got my attention. Yeah. Um, Middle of, of the page on page two, first line, there's a statement, maybe Mary Louise remembers what she, what she said, but uh, this doesn't make sense. Selectman Woolsey commented on the gifting public hearing. I couldn't, oh, yeah, I that's know that's not what you said, but I don't yeah. know. It, it was a public hearing to public allow gift. Mr. Ross yeah. to donate the, yeah, I'm, I, can we just scratch gifting from that? Yes, and, okay. and I'm still. Okay, Selectman so Woolsey commented on the public with hearing. not having a secretary present. I don't know how gifting get in there. Page three. <laughs> I think it was. Angels flew down and the popped it in. Gifting of the sidewalk. Yeah. So and he's donating the, the sidewalk yeah. out of his own money. Okay. Well, how about if we eliminate but gifting? We're ending you, up you with can a take crummy, that out for the crummy hot top sidewalk. Okay. Page three. Well, it won't be crummy, it'll be nice, but whatever. Page four. Um, this one's a question for Phil. Uh, I couldn't make sense of the number. Under Article 35, Phil, it says, Sleitman Bean made comments as follows in regards to Article 35, <laughs> the recession of 79E, thinks do better <laughs> chunk of the 23 million. I couldn't make sense of a $23 million number. Uh, I want to say that it's about 2.76 million. It's 276 thousand dollars. Is that correct? The 185 on the C spray. 35 35. So, um, yeah, it should be then. Uh, 185 thousand. Yeah. Okay. At 23 million. I couldn't speed. make sense of that anywhere. Thank you. Okay. Um, page five. <coughs> page six. Page seven. Page eight. Page nine. Page ten. I'll make a motion to approve the December nine minutes as amended. I'll second that. All in favor? <coughs> All opposed? Abstaining? Motion passes. Four one zero with Bullsey opposed. Um, question for you, Mary Louise. Yes, sir. One of the concerns, what I thought was the major concern that you had expressed was the fact that there were comments in the minutes that were not attributed to particular people. Right. I saw that as being resolved in, well, in these minutes. Well, it's a little better. It's still, the, the minutes are awkward. I'm I, not I, happy as, with the format. As I, okay, but yeah. I, I'm just commenting yeah. that as, as I went through this, yeah. and I've been kind of looking it's a better the last effort. couple of weeks to see when that would kick in, mm -hmm. you know, when we made our comments or whatever. Yeah. And as soon as I saw this, I said, okay, this must be the yeah. first one where that message got across. And, really and I was looking for it, and I thought it was very good yeah. in right. that respect. I, I felt that problem had been better. addressed. Better. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Non-public minutes of December 16th. I'll make so a motion moved. to approve the non-public. Mary Louise makes a motion to approve the non-public minutes of December I'll 16th. Second um, seconded by Selectman Pierce. All in favor? Motion passes 4-0-0. Zero, zero. Selectman Bean did not vote. Okay. okay. Didn't you see the vote? 
Town Manager's Report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, work continues in the Church Street pump station. The electrical generator and transformer have been placed in the building. Stairwell work continues with reinforcing and concrete having been placed. Electrical work continues with the installation of lighting and heating in the toilet room. The HVAC systems are being installed and the ceil uh, ceiling in installations are in progress. Mm -hmm. In response to the board's direction, I have forwarded to the police, fire, and public works departments a proposed codification of the parking requirements for Route 1A from High Street to Church Street for review. Uh, and I've also given you a copy of that tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for corrections, uh, before we actually ask the board to yeah. please give us authority to go to the state, because I think that's our next step after that's done. So, so those stopped at, at Church Street? Huh? I stopped them at Church Street because of the construction going on. Actually, those signs go uh, all the way down to uh, Highland. Okay. okay. Uh, but uh, I thought we ought to wait until the construction's finished so we can see what's there and how we want to judge that. I'm not sure, but uh, you know, are there 10 minute signs down towards um, O Street, N Street, P Street, whatever? I haven't gone down that far. I, I think I wouldn't swear to it, but I think yeah, there may be. It could very well be. But uh, the intention was to go all the way down to the bridge. Get that done. But right now you're focused. I've, I've done it in a chunk, so we yeah. can try so to get focused high street yeah. to church. Well, right. That's try to helpful. get something yeah. done that's. Yeah. Well, the main driver was well, North Beach, so. Right. Yeah. right. Ashworth or Ocean Boulevard down where it's split? Both? Uh, Ashworth. Uh, Ocean Boulevard is out of our jurisdiction. Right. Uh, yeah. Ashworth is ours. If there's anything on Ocean Boulevard, that's the process we're going through right now. Right. Where po police, fire, public works have to approve it, bring it back to you folks. You then have to approve it. Once you approve it and say you're willing to enact the ordinance, we'll notify state DOT. Okay. DOT will look at it. They'll give it their blessing, come back, and they'll, they'll uh, uh, send a letter to the police department asking them to enforce the ordinance once you enact it and sign yeah. it. Okay. So that's the process as, as I understand it currently. Thank you. As long as they don't change the process at DOT, we're all yeah. set. We're on the right track. Um, We'll need to keep a close eye on House Bill 1110. Uh, 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 there's going to be a change if it passes, which would disallow towns from using sales of properties for the purpose of adjusting values without reappraisal uh, on a more town-wide basis. That can be an extremely expensive proposition when you get into town-wide reappraisals. So, how, so you, how are we supposed to do it, Fred, if we don't do that? Well, right now what happens is we, uh, we get sales analysis that come in. Uh, you sell your property, you're required to file a form with the state with us. We use that to figure out whether or not your property is within that class of property is, is, is fairly well established for an adjustment. At the end of the year, they can look and see how all the properties in that particular category are adjusted or, or need to be adjusted, mm -hmm. and they can go out and do a limited reval. Mm -hmm. um, the state's basically saying, no, no, you can't do that anymore. You've got to do a town-wide reval. So I'm sure that's something that's going to play out in the legislature. <laughs> well, we, we actually don't. It's, it's what the state does, uh, they look at our current values and they look at the, uh, the equalization factors that they formulate with those values. And if they're within a certain parameter, we don't have to readjust. Uh, if they're not, there's, we do. There's a, complicated. There, there is going to be a, a lot of dialogue on that bill. I don't think that's oh, yeah. necessarily going to emerge as introduced. In, in, as near as I can tell, there are many, many, many assessors that are opposed to that, and, and there are some aspects to that that are, are not well thought out. And, and I, I, I would, if I were a betting guy, I would suspect that those are, are, are going to either be corrected or... or it's going to be a to legislate. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, how I often, hope so. How often do they want? Uh, what? How? What is the frequency of the new proposal? They're, they're not. Year? Mike, they they're haven't not, gotten there yet. They're, they're not changing the proposal. Basically, what they're saying there's, there's a concept um, in assessing called sales chasing. Okay, which is is not a, a good thing, and is is sometimes done. That being when when an assessor um, gets a sale and and the amount is off, and he knows there's an equalization study and whatever coming. He, he changes the value. Our assessor doesn't do that, but it, it changes the value to reflect the amount of the sale, where he's essentially, you know, uh, cheating and, and and distorting, you know, the process. That's never been an acceptable practice or whatever. Okay, a different, 
okay? And this is, I think, where the confusion is in the, in the language of their bill practice is that one of the things we do when, when qualified sales occur during the course of the year, okay, we send somebody out to do a measuring list of that property to basically make sure that the information that we have in the tax card is accurate in relation to what is out there. So, for example, on those in this past year, in our equalization study from October 1st of 12th to September 30th of, of 13, there are roughly about 300 properties that fell into that category of qualified sales. We send somebody out, and if they go out and there's a garage there, and there's no garage yeah. on our tax card, yeah. okay, then we adjust the, yeah, the tax card to reflect right. what's really there, okay, yeah. and then that would naturally add to the value of the property. That's very different than sales chasing, where, you know, you're, you're, you're cheating to, yeah. to reflect a, right. a sale yeah. to make you work, and, and that's where, uh, you know, the, uh, this, this I, I think that this will, will get corrected or be ITL. Let yeah. me ask one question before we charge you over this. If the properties are all selling for 100000 more than what we have them appraised, wouldn't we want to adjust to what the market values are? No. 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 Not would, until you do a rebound. You would want to do an you have to do a an overall adjustment. Right. You wouldn't want to just adjust the ones. Oh, I understand. Not just the ones, but you'd have to do, do an area or the whole town. The whole, the whole town or, or a specific Spe area, depending on what you could okay. do a, a specific okay. area. No, I understand that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. My suggestion is if you, if you want to know more on that subject, it's a very complicated subject. Talk to the assessor and he yeah. can oh, No, I didn't want to get into that deep. So the new proposal they're talking about is that going to be have to be the full assessment going to be done every year? No, no, no they're not changing no. the frequency at all. Oh, not frequency. frequencies won't, won't no. change. Just no. the method on how you might get Just the there. methodology. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I'm sure know. they'll drive themselves crazy talking to themselves in a circle on the subject. Uh, Wayne County High School has confirmed our use of the building for deliberative session on yeah. February 1st and the town elections on March 11th. In accordance with the director from the board, an estimate uh, for the work to be done on the code, which we've already talked about, was provided. Mm -hmm. uh, and I certainly hope everyone has a has a great uh, Christmas coming up. In a hey, couple of days. No, I'm not done. Oh, well, we got we, we got some good with Christmas in there. I think. Yeah, I figured you're going to push us off, and uh, uh, we're going to shower presents through the, through the hall and so on and so forth. Um, we did receive from the Hampton Academy, which I'll pass around for all the board members to look at, some cards from some of the students <coughs> in the Hampton Academy That's thanking true. our public works people and That's our nice. town employees yeah. for the jobs that they do. Oh, uh, and and that's, it's really, really nice that uh, uh, some people um, take the time, particularly our students, to take a look at uh, what's really going on. Mm. In the good news front, we're going to receive some money from, from yeah. the uh, Health Trust. Yeah. Uh, we're going to receive a refund of $51,373.31 on March 3rd, 2014. How much? Why? How much? Uh, it's a refund of surplus, 50, a little over $51,300. So wow. it only took 10 years to start getting refunds of surplus. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Uh, and you received a, a thank you card um, from Victor uh, DeMarco. Uh, oh, yeah. for your kindness to him yeah. uh, and thinking of him during his recovery. So, and that, sir, is it. Okay, questions for Fred? Oh, actually, though, one observation that Fred brought up about the school, if those of you who have been watching uh, Channel 13 lately, um, very nice presentations from Winnicunit. Oh, very nice. Doing a very good job. The very students are very bright. Very presentations yeah. from Winnicunit on the uh, public access channel. Okay. 2014 Warren articles. Mark, did you want to come up to the table then? Oh. We get to talk about pick on Mark now, do we? He's no, he's, he's <laughs> our source of knowledge, and we don't want to oh, pick on him. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, that's cute. Okay. First thing, Christina has um, started with a notation with a date on the right-hand side of, of Warren articles that. Um, She's noting as, as, as having a feeling that they're finalized, yeah, that and I, I was thinking before um, we got into any issues with individual articles, maybe the same manner as we did last time, working through them sequentially and whatever, not necessarily every one. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, first thing I would just suggest is going to the dates, and I'd make a couple of comments on a few. One is, is the budget is showing a date finalized, 1216. I would just make the comment that's not going to be right. finalized. It needs to be updated, for example, for our default budget right. number yeah. tonight. Right. It'll be changed again when the budget committee right. public right. hearing is done and so on and so forth. But we'll get a figure one way or another. Right. S SCA contract, is the language has not even started, so I think. Then. When is this budget committee's public hearing? Uh, yeah. The 14th. I 14th. Is the 14th. 14th is a close of warrant. I think the same night they're holding a hearing. Yeah. That's January 14th. Yeah. They have another next meeting is January 7th. Delayed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. SCA, I, I think you have to scratch that as being done. There's no language. And right. I, have a, I have a question. Who, Mark, who is the uh, author of the uh, CBA uh, warrant articles? Is that you? Is that Mike? Or, um, Better. Uh, well, let's see. Do you have any in here yet? Well, the SEA has been done for a couple of weeks. Um, we're going to be looking to ratify the, the police, and then I suspect um, we will probably have another one the following week and another one the following week. So I'm just... We have the boilerplate for the... Uh, I'm just asking. I mean, obviously, somebody needs to have that on yeah. their list of things to do. That's... Yeah. I don't... Yeah, that, that would uh, be a combination of... Uh, Oh, well. Usually, my department and uh, the <laughs> finance department. Okay, so you will be doing that, and you will be working with Mike on the numbers or whatever. And yeah. just what it's worth, I, I know he and I have gone back and forth on some of the analysis. I believe he has pretty much got those numbers um, available. Um, I don't know if he even contemplates anything um, additional because the you know the, the 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 work at the table is done. We may not have ratified yeah. them all, but nothing should change in the numbers. Okay, oh. um, DPW equipment replacement. I believe that that one it does not have a date on it. Um, and maybe Fred, if, if you could get this information back sure. to Christina, yeah. she can certainly call me. I've got notes on mine of something. Very. I believe that the DPW equipment replacement one can be considered final with the exception we're anticipating a, a, a potential change in the number at deliberative session. Not, based not a on change in that number. You get a, you'll, get a, you'll get a little sub line in there on the bottom explaining the trade-in. But That's we have to raise and appropriate the whole amount. Yeah, the trade-in, uh, I had promised Mary Louise I would ask DRA Okay. If they would find acceptable the same type of language. Okay, so there is language to change in that. Yes. That, so we're not done with okay. that. Okay. Good. All right. um, road improvement. Um, I kind of thought that was complete. I didn't. Um, Sounds like it is. That's yeah, on that's page a straightforward nine. capital reserve. Right. right. Human so services. I, is so I, I think we could, you know, consider the road improvement one complete as of 12 20, 23. Yeah. I mean, uh, let, let's bear in mind we're we're mostly talking about being complete from the standpoint of the select. Now, Mark, I believe that you still have the um, uh, authority even after um, January 14th. You may change some of the language in an article before it hits the warrant. You may it may not change the 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 intent of the article, but you may make yeah. just grammatical yeah. changes or sure. change it up or whatever in between the yeah. 14th and, and the warrant being printed, right? Right. Okay. May I interject for a second? Right, can you see that those cards get to the appropriate people? In yes, it will. I, I want the board to see them That's first. That's so cute. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank There's you. There's no, no flowers. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next one I would comment is I think at this point we, we should be able to eliminate that number 31 reserved. Yeah. I don't know why we, I mean, it, it, there's potentially going to be some shuffling. There's been some discussion of moving the uh, the um, Chapter 79E article right. forward. But I don't think, I mean, that made sense when she gone. first put it there. But yeah. And um, I felt that the... 32 um, down, they should, they should all be pretty well locked Well, up. the only one that isn't noted is, is the uh, 79E, Recession of the Community, re community Revitalization oh. and Tax Relief Incentive. And... I believe, from the board of selectmen's perspective, that one is is done. Just waiting to Yeah. So that I think we can yeah, pencil in a date on that one at yep. twelve twenty-three. Okay. That, that that's past Mark's legal review. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Mark wrote it. Yes. <laughs> moving. There you are. Moving through the articles. Um, budget. I already made my comments. Just the numbers are there. Yeah. Um, I would like to see Mark, if possible, just so we don't have too many all at once. The language of the um, ones that are ratified 
showing up by next Monday. Is that possible? I'm sorry. What's that now? The, uh, the, the CBA-related articles. Yeah. We have one that's ratified at this point. We've got an agenda item. We may have three by the time tonight is over. They've been ratified both by the union membership and the Board of Selectmen. Um, can we get language in this um, such that we can get those done by next um, Monday? I'll, uh, I'll see if Wanda can do that. I wouldn't be able to, but she may be able okay. to. And she actually, she may be the better one to do right. that at exactly. this point. Okay. Yeah. But we're at a point there. now where we've basically got the 30th, the 6th, yeah. and the 13th. Yeah. So the ones that we can yeah. get out of the way that, uh, on the 30th, yeah. that would behoove us to, so we're not we're dealing with now. too many yeah. at the last yeah, I minute. I suggest that sometime we start voting them so we get that out of the way, too. And so the one you want in particular was the SEA? Voting, Mike, meaning to vote to recommend or not recommend? No. That, that, uh, I'm not sure the exact date we do that, but that is after the 14th that we do that. Yeah. We have uh, usually you wait until the warrant closes before right. you Right, you because otherwise you get a petition done the 14th. Oh, okay. So what we've typically done is sometime, I'll, I'll just okay. guess and say the range of the 14th yeah. to the 20th or whatever, we will have a, a portion of an agenda item meeting where we'll go through one by one on a vote to recommend or not recommend. We have not publicly voted to ratify. Hmm. The anything other than the SEA, I thought. I don't recall. That's correct. We've got, I, what I said is we've got two on the agenda tonight. Yeah. Some tonight, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Sorry. So. Okay. Um, Grist Mill Dam, I cut number 15. I kind of felt that language was, was final. Anybody have a different point of view on that? No. On the 16, did we finally all agree okay, on Okay, well, the let's, on 15, so we, we have an agreement that I'd rather 15 see the two together, but if they're going to go right. separately. On 15, we have an agreement then that that yep, one is final? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And on 16, um, it now has this version, um, the one I'm looking yep. at, I assume the same one, 1219, does have the 87,500 number to adjust up to the 50, right. 175,000 that Wait you recommended. So I, I would consider that one. Which um, one are you talking about? 16? 16. 16. 16. That's it's got 175 in there. Yeah. 87 yeah, 5 look farther down no, that, that's the, the okay. conditional um, amount the, right. the approval is conditioned on receiving 87 500 okay. I'm, okay. Go ahead. I'm all happy with that one too, I think okay on the um, social service article um, number 19 with the 17 um, child and family services has been removed right. um, I believe that that, that that reflects a decision that we made crossroads last week yes sir um, crossroads I, I thought was it's kind gone. of up in the no, air it's gone. and can, can you update on what's taken place and we we've had a number of meetings uh, discussions uh, we've had a large meeting with them and and uh, a couple of agencies uh, I've even been through uh, representative uh, Munns who was interceded yeah. with the state and talked to them uh, basically what's happened here is they are no longer a contracting source for us we can't go to them at all uh, we have to go through a third party who will then direct us yeah. to some place within the county or, or within two counties so we have no direct contract with them yeah. whatsoever so what happened point. to crosswords are they aren't they still in they've crosswords? gone they, they're very active they continue to be operational uh, we will continue to pay them for people who go there who, who walk in or mm -hmm. are referred there for some reason or another um, who are our residents of course yeah. um, but they they no longer can take reservations for people and needing assistance from us yeah. we can't even talk to them about it yeah. This is Hampton or any town? This is, uh, well, right now it's Hampton, but any, any town that's in the district that wants to send people there. Yeah. They have a new system where everything has to go through a clearing house up in Stratford County. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Stratford County. Yes. Yeah, Stratford and Rockingham together. Okay. And um, we would like to have that working relationship, which, which we've always had, but we no longer have that. Recently, we did send a person over there. The police brought a person over there, and they were, they were refused. Um, is, is Michelle in the loop? On yes. Because she's oh, yes. the one person in town hall that yeah. I would think would be. She's involved. been in the loop from the beginning on this, and she's she's uh, certainly 100% behind uh, the recommendation to remove that. Okay. So are, are we all set then in yes. terms of this article? Yes, We're sir. viewing it as complete then? Should be some 139,000, yep. I believe, at this point. Yep. Everybody all set yes. with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's complete. Uh, police forfeiture is fine. Um, on the on the two rec articles, 21 and 22, well, take them take them take them one at a time or whatever. Yeah. Let's start with 21. We we've got the information that's in the article 21 that's part of the <coughs> December 19th version. But what we also had 
in our box yeah. um, mm -hmm. was 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 a sheet with some information. Um, anybody have any comments on Article 21? Does that figure stay? I just don't remember. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. Um, well. The second one was basically <coughs> information. Okay, and I'll, I'll I'll tell you what I interpreted when I, when I kind of played the two against each other. The the the, the language of the Warren article and the sheet we got, okay? Um, the amount in the Warren article is 90000 If you look at the sheet, it basically says 80000 for the lights at Eaton Park um, and 10000 to replace signs at, 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 yep. at Tuck Field. That comes to 90000 My question is, what happened to the damaged fencing? Um, that must cost money to, to fix. And, and, and the, the Warren article item C, there was an A and a B and a C. Yeah. So basically what we've got in this list is $90,000 in A and B, nothing to C, but C is still in the warrant out. Yeah, that needs to come out. And, needs and, to come out. and beyond that, I, I'm just, um, you know, I'd really like better information, but I, I just can't find myself voting to spend $80,000 to replace nine lights when it appears to me, and I've brought this up a couple of times in these meetings and nobody's challenged me, that the actual poles that yeah. hold, hold the there. pictures look okay. These don't look like old, rotted, you know, uh, oh, piece yeah. of timber or, or yeah. whatever. Um, uh, I'm not eight, happy about this stuff. 80,000 yeah. just doesn't make sense in the absence of of, of, of something that's an estimate or, or whatever yeah. that, you know. Some detail give you a warm feeling. Yeah, because it just, I mean, I look at that and I say, yeah. would you I like mean to strike that? Even, yeah. a, even a, you know, if the picture costs $1,000 or $2,000 a piece, that's only ten or twenty thousand dollars and I know there's some wiring to be done but it's just not transformer I, I just don't feel like uh, so I, I, I think you, you know we, we can it. pull it right up to the 13th but I, I well, think we I would not pull well, it because maybe it does need to be done but I think the message needs to go back to Diana that it, it's like there's you want a detailed written <coughs> estimate an explanation of all the work to be done well, so we can feel better about it if right. we're going to spend that yep. kind of money. Yeah. Right. It's a lot of money. And, and yeah. Right, yeah. you know, in the absence. I disagree with the chairman on that. Okay. Um, so that's that one. Number 22. She revised that to 10,000, didn't she? I yes, I think it was. It's it no, it, there is another one, and, and 30,000 became 10,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which automatically for me prompts the question, why was it 30,000 in, in the, in the well, first place? Whatever. It's... I don't think she had a correct estimate, and I think she does there. I, I attached an estimate she yeah. gave me to it. Basically, if I remember correctly, that is the 10000 for all three of them? Yeah. Yes. So reduce, right. it, reduce the 30000 to 10000 mm -hmm. and I don't have a problem letting that go forward. I don't let, let me ask uh, a, a question. <coughs> um, not that I'm necessarily in favor of it, but I'll, I'll get it out there. Yeah. We, we just went through a whole number of, of year-end spending yeah. encumbrances and, and whatever. Yeah. If, if, and, and, and I think we estimated that there's 250000 or 260000 yeah. unspent. There's at least um, five or 6000 in the parking lot accounts alone oh, yeah. that is right. unspent yeah. in, in 2013. Well, so my question is, this, if this makes sense to the Board of Selectmen, why are we burdening the voters with, with a warrant well, article as opposed fine. to approving it as, as, as a year in spending. There's nothing else. You can just take money from the parking lot account, the 5000 do have to work now. Yeah. There's money left over next year. Do have to work next year. How much money is in the account now? Five grand. The parking lot, this, I'm not sure if there's any money in the rest of the rec department. The parking lot account had $5,249 available at the end of the start the price. Start there and do it next year. Let's so not spend all year on it. Oh, I, I just don't see it for, for that amount. I all mean, right. if this was 100000 right. you know, let the voters yes. decide. Right. Let me see if we can get the whole 10000 number account. So can coming. we look at this as scratching the warrant yes. article and looking right. at this, Mike said he'd be in next week, yeah. as, I'll talk as to adding Mike. on to our okay. list yep. of, of yep. spending. Yep. I'll talk to Mike. What then am I feeling squeamish about well, we not having any money at the end? We should have stuff like that in November at the latest. This is ridiculous. Okay. Um... Mark, a couple um, that the 26 and 27, the wastewater system entrance fee and the solid waste ordinance, where, where do those stand in terms of us seeing a, an, another draft? Or uh, Fred has uh, very kindly taken on uh, putting together the results of our meetings on the subject, and uh, 
His only problem in not giving you something today was he couldn't read some of my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> understandable. Very understandable. Language Usually I can get it. Yeah. I, I, I have that. Uh, I, I'm never going to understand the math. I'm sorry, Fred. No. You're going to have to explain that. Okay. No, that's not a problem. Well, was that true of both of them, Mark, or just 26? Just no, 26. no. 27 is a little different category. Okay. That Un one is complicated enough so that with all the various amendments proposed, what I wanted to give you was something in Word that shows what the changes are. Yeah. Okay, before we move off at 26 to 27, yeah. can we get then, it sounds like we can get a copy of 26 um, either tomorrow, can, can we get a copy of that tomorrow? As long as he can give me his amendments, he can that, take that, that yeah. particular one, Legibly. I think Mary Louise may feel yes. the same. I'd like to see an opportunity, oh, yeah. I, I'd like to be able to see that and have an opportunity to provide comments before yeah. Friday so that the sure. comments aren't first yeah. showing up at Monday's Absolutely. meeting. Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And how about 27? You said that's a different animal? Different animal. Well, that's that, that's, that's pieces. Yeah. trying to show yeah. first what the amendments are with, with mm -hmm. my recommendations or not, and then what the effect of those are on the ordinance, much as we did with the mm -hmm. entertainment ordinance. Yeah. That, that may be a little longer one and may not be available by Monday. Yeah. All the waste, it's, it's all over the place. It's going to be a long one at yeah, last, right? it's a lot of I, I would just comment if it's, if it's not available Monday, then that means the next time we're talking about it is, is the second to last meeting um, yeah. before the, the end. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but it's, it's a big one and it's messy, so I and can that's, understand that's yeah. well. I, I think the, if, if it's not available on Monday, being Monday the 30th, right, I, th I think it would be advantageous if the selectmen are getting it Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever that week so there's an opportunity to look at it as opposed to not seeing it until Saturday morning oh, before yeah. the yeah. meeting of the 6th. That makes sense. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Can um, we go back to 23, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Yes, sir, 23. The only thing that needs to be done there is the amount. There, there are usually some amounts that come in right, up, right after yeah. the end of the year yeah. for money that they may have received. Yeah. Other than that, the verbiage is the same right. every year. Right. Good. So. So okay. you would probably have a good idea what that's going to be on the day now. Uh, yes, probably in the rhythm of the week. About 10,000 now, yeah. roughly, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So okay. I, the verbiage is done anyhow. Just, ready just, just, you know. the, um, yeah, just yeah. the number. Next yeah. one that I have comments on um, is, is the entertainment license. Oh, yeah. um, I, I don't want to get into any detail tonight, but um, after the public input session, I do want an opportunity to knock some ideas around with Mark on the issue of the outside entertainment and some of the feedback. I don't know where it's going to go. Mark, are, are you out all week and just in today or? Yeah, and next Monday night. Yes, that's right. Good for you. But, but you're in, so you're in Monday and oh, Tuesday, Tuesday right. of next week then? Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday. so that's like? Monday night and Tuesday. So that's like the 31st and the 1st, <coughs> which, because some of my ideas, I won't go into the detail now, but some of my ideas, if, if you like them, okay, I think it's going to turn into another step, which is running them by um, the PD or whatever. And I just want to um, see, and I guess we would have enough time if we're talking about that on, say, the 31st or whatever. Yeah. Then, then that would give us the 6th and the 13th. Yeah. Okay. And it may go, you know, they, I'm not, I haven't even totally, you know, um, reconciled them in my own mind. My so suggestion would be is what Mark and I do often is I just email him. Yeah. And when he has the opportunity when he's away, sometimes he can get onto the email, email and look himself. at it yeah. and make a comment. Yeah, th these are kind of more interactive. In oh, are, are these just real different. significant changes, Mr. Chairman, are you just piddling with some of the details? What's that? Are you just piddling with the details or the philosophical big change on the entertainment thing? Um, ba basically, with, with and I haven't solved, you know, sometimes you're presented with an issue and a problem mm -hmm. and, and you haven't come up with a, a solution to it. You just know that it's, you got some input and it's something that's worth thinking about it. And, and that in, in, input simply had to do with the outside entertainment um, issue. Okay. And if, if there is some way to have a little bit different twist on that. And I don't, I don't want to go into any more detail okay. because I haven't thought about it myself, so I'll okay. just sound dumb. Um, okay. If I do. Okay. okay. That pretty much covers anything else anybody have on the Warren articles? Okay. Okay. Let's see. Next item. Ratification of the police patrolmen and police sergeants um, 
tentative agreements. And actually, it's one tentative agreement when we when we meet with police and we meet with fire. Even though both have two bargaining units, yeah. we're meeting with one, and we end up with one tentative agreement. Also, move that we ratify the agreement with the two police unions. Okay. Um, I will second that. <coughs> We've reached an agreement at the negotiating table with the Hampton Police Association on collective bargaining agreements with the patrolmen and the sergeants. The union membership has ratified the tentative agreement and is proposed that the selectmen ratify this evening. Selectmen have a copy of the agreement for the benefit of the public. I'll provide a few highlights. This is a two-year agreement running from April 1, 2014 to March 31, 2016. Finance director has estimated the cost at about $80,000 for 2014 and $150,000 for 2015. The proposed wage scale contains across the board one and a quarter percent increases effective April 1, 2014 and April 1, 2015. In addition, there were several adjustments to the pay scales. The addition of a two years patrolman step between the one year and the four year step. The addition of a 20 year patrolman step with a two percent increase over the 15 year step a 30% per hour rate increase in the sergeant's wage scale, and the detective sergeant will receive an additional 5% over base pay, which is consistent with the 5% that the detectives um, and the patrolman's contract have been receiving right along. Uh, prosecutors will receive an additional 2% while performing prosecutorial duties. New employees hired after April 1, 2014 will contribute 25% of POS health insurance plan premiums and 20% of the HMO plans as opposed to the 15% and the 10% contributed by existing employees. There is an increase in the line of duty death benefit for police specials, part-time employees from 10,000 to 40,000. This tentative agreement, in my opinion, is in the best interest of the town. It's fair to both sides and I recommend that the selectmen ratify and that the voters support it. Um, we have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. So now we basically, Mark, have three um, that, that, that yeah. could be written. You, you indicated Wanda would be working on that. I, I, I suspect that's fairly simple in terms of looking back at prior year um, boilerplates or whatever. So, okay. Um, next item is the effective date of 2014 non union um, wage adjustment. Did you bring your print with you? Because I forgot to make a printout of our little wording that we agreed on. Uh, Mark Mark did. I don't know. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, yes, thank yeah. you very much. <coughs> okay, you comfy with this, Mark? Uh, well, let's, uh, let me hand it out first. Thank you. I wish yeah. I had this earlier today. I haven't this, this is very different from what Mary Louise had sent me. What? No, the bottom part is what we agreed to, I thought. Last. Uh, the, what, 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 uh, the board, not, a, not every member of the board has seen this, so you may not want to take this up tonight. Uh, uh, other than I wanted, I'll, can I just give you a status on this? Yeah. I was... Uh, met with uh, Selectman Nichols and Selectman Woolsey and uh, town manager uh, to discuss the subject that was on the non-public session minutes <coughs> and uh, out of that came uh, thoughts about regularizing the poli a, a policy for implementing non-union raises mm -hmm. and um, to try to sort of reconcile the manager's authority under RSA 37 colon 6 with the selectman's overall direction authority under RSA 37 3. And so uh, this has, there, there was first a suggestion of a motion that was made at the, the meeting we had, uh, which is the one at the top, and then there was uh, a much more detailed suggestion that followed on that. I did a draft, right. So and then a third, which was the last one I got anyway, yeah. and I may have missed one. Uh, yeah, you missed the sentence from the... The bottom 
sentence. Yep. Yeah. And that's I I am comfortable with the bottom one. Uh, that okay. Shows, so. I will um, read a motion, which I think factors everything in, and basically what I'm doing, Mark, is just making a couple of um, changes to what you just handed out. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of which is is simply this is not huge. Um, changing payroll stability to payroll consistency. Okay, just because oh, yeah. you do That's it on April good. 1st doesn't yeah. mean it's not going to be a big increase. So I would change. You see the stability that I'm talking about? Second stability. line. This will guarantee budgetary and payroll stability, and I'm suggesting that stability be changed yeah. to consistency. That's no problem. Okay. I have consistency on mine. Yeah. All right, he made the correction already. Oh, this is your copy. I thought it was Barnes. Go ahead. Okay. What, I, what I was just handed has this stability. Is the one that Richard and I went right. back and forth on. The one I have yeah. has yeah. stability. Yeah. Mine has the consistency. The one he gave me has consistency. No, consistency is fine. Oh, oh no, really. the bottom one. Oh, down here. Oh, yeah, right. you go, you go down from here. Uh, yeah. The bottom one that yeah. says Dick Nichols oh. 1221. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Read the bottom one. That's, that's, yeah. that, that's why I that's sure would have appreciated you, this you today. So the, the first paragraph, yeah. then, is the old version, and the we italics is the new version? Yeah. Yes. Oh. The bottom one is okay. the one you and I Okay. I did not realize that. I just yeah. looked at this. Okay. Now you can see why I like to have things in my box on Friday afternoon. I agree. I agree. Right. I am. I am totally sympathetic with your point. <laughs> Thank you. It's about time you come around to my way of thinking. Are you going to read it or what? Um, yes. <laughs> have we made a motion yet? Well, I will make the motion. Since I will move that in the matter of non-union employee annual merit slash COLA raises, we set an effective date of April 1st in each year. This will assure budgetary and payroll consistency. No retroactive raises will be allowed without the specific consent of a majority of the Board of Selectmen. An interim salary increase for an individual employee will likewise only be allowed with the specific consent of a majority of the Board of Selectmen. The personnel policy shall be amended effective December 23rd to reflect this policy. I will second that. Yeah. Discussion. Well, we need we need to get something in there so we're not all over the board and doing. Everybody it. happy now? Yeah, mm -hmm. I hope. We we to, to the discussion. Um, we knocked around. I don't think anybody questioned the benefit of having a specific date and having that being the same yeah. date each year. An annual increase yeah. is an annual increase. I think we very quickly settled on April first simply mm -hmm. because that's when the union contracts um, tend. Um, you know, tend to have as, as the effective dates, whether you look at them this year, April 1st, 14, 15, and so on and so forth. I think that one of the reasons why we need something like this is because there seem to be <clears throat> a lack of knowledge, is a better word, of uh, raises going back to the beginning of time. And I can remember when I first got on the budget committee, Mary Louise Wolsey was having an absolute fit because Barrington pulled some kind of maneuver that was similar to this, to this. And she's right. I mean, I think you have to be very careful with this sort of thing. And I think we should, when we say we want to give a raise today, that means today, not last year or six months ago. I mean, that was my interpretation of the way I thought that went down. But I think this will clear it up to make sure everybody's sort of on the same page, maybe. Right gentlemen, what this forces the board to do basically is project for in the fall mm -hmm. some planning because you need a figure mm -hmm. for the municipal budget committee. Right. Understanding that the figure that will go to the municipal budget committee will be a figure to accommodate the first 13 weeks mm -hmm. of the next budget year mm -hmm. with the raises incorporated. So that's carrying through the any existing raises mm -hmm. in the first 13 weeks of the following year. And then the remaining 39 weeks of the following year will incorporate the new increase. And will depend if the any. budget passes or not. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Right. I'm and voting again, yes. Th this oh. year is 14,000 in the default, 25,000 yeah. in the operating budget. Yeah. Um, we have a motion by Mary I'm Louise, second yes. by myself. All Fine. in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. Yeah. Um, Mark, I would just make one other comment to the. All this stuff, one of the reasons why I'm putting the personnel policy in this one, and I did also, yeah. we had a, a subsequent motion two weeks ago on that other one yeah. that had to do with, with wages or contracts yeah. that could um, roll in a future years right. or whatever, mm -hmm. is, is 
th there needs to be a, a place right. as much as possible to, to hold yeah. these things and yeah. for the wage elements of it this yeah. one and and yeah. the portions of the last one the personnel policy yeah. um, is is the location so yeah. if if Wanda can yeah. roll both of those into an update to the personnel policy is I mean I, yeah. I don't think whether it's done in a week or two or three isn't a big deal um, I think that that we've already approved these things so I think that can simply be done as if she wishes as yeah. a consent agenda item as opposed to having to come in here at you know seven or eight o'clock. Having it there is an effective tracker. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We want yeah. to encourage future boards to keep a consistency right. about this. It seems well, a lot. It, it's not just consistency but yeah. as, as long as you Commitment. update the documents, mm -hmm. okay, whether it's the purchasing policy, whether yeah. it's the personnel policy, right. whether it's the code of ordinance, they, there's a certain credibility attached to those so that when somebody goes to do something, they don't just make it up on their own. They say, oh, I'll go look at the personnel policy and see yeah. what, see what that says. Consistency there. Yep. It's all written. But okay. I, what I mean about that, Richard, is the consistency of the date, focusing on a date, sir, and getting it over. Yeah, I agree. Okay. okay. Um, any other old business? Uh, did you? You're not. Thank you. Mark. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, thank you for coming in tonight. Any other old business? New business. Annual report. Selectman photo. I, I have a feeling Mary Louise brought this up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't well, bring it up. Well, Christina asked me about when I don't know when we were going to put photos in. In the old days when dinosaurs roamed the world. Oh no. And the pictures were black and white. Always yeah. got together. Dog and pony days. And I mean, uh, or some buggy days. I mean. And I think it's. I think it's. <coughs> I like the idea of a group photo, other than having five pictures plastered at random on I the can page. do that as long as I put this behind your head. I w are you welcome to try? It'll <laughs> still show vibrancy in the board. <laughs> but I would like to get together with uh, for a group photo. You'll sit in the front row and That's, you won't so be able to So it's up to you to and it doesn't, <laughs> need, it doesn't need two hours worth of discussion. I just wanted to throw that out. I, I, don't, I, I don't care one way or the other. We did that in the 90s. Well, we'd always done that until oh, fairly okay, so you what, do you get, what are you going to do, do with it again? Photos. Does anybody it's have a, a problem? What is the uniform of the day, Mr. <laughs> Chairman? Just what you get well, on. Well, you look very handsome this evening. So yeah, you'll you wear your nice tie, and I'll have my open collar, and maybe I'll yeah. even wear a tie. <laughs> hey, it shows character. Okay. In the uh -oh. Do we have a, a consensus on our group photo? I don't care. It makes okay. a difference to me. Um, would but Michelle be taking that photo? We'll make that it. inquiry, sir. I okay, she so will. somebody, Christina or Michelle, yeah. will we'll schedule up a time and we'll coordinate that. Yeah. Okay, any other oh. new business? Very good. Any yeah. closing <laughs> comments? Yes, I'd like have to make eight. one, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank everybody in the town of Hampton that have been su supportive in my situation for the last uh, few months, and I really appreciate it, and I thank everybody in the whole town. Thank you. Okay. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. At 9.38 p.m. Do I have a second? I did. Second. Oh, sorry, missed that. Two seconds. Yeah, you did. Three I seconds. take it, Mr. Bean, based on his comments early in the meeting, we'll vote in favor of this? Yes, sir. All in favor? <laughs> 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 Merry Christmas, guys. Okay, well, don't leave.